Welcome everyone and welcome Dana and Marco. And we are uh, jumping into the topic of the intentional city in the clouds, which I also refer to as ICIC, its acronym. And as I wrote in the email, one of your experiences when you get to the intentional city in the clouds is you say, I see, I see. It's like, it's that transformational. That's the idea. And um, so I think I see, I see is a good name for it. <laughs> intentional city in the clouds. Like we've all heard about intentional communities and visited intentional communities and stayed with intentional communities and maybe even lived there. And so they're super cool. But that conjures up a notion of a, of a, of a much tighter kind of smaller sort of thing. A city is like a much broader concept in that it contains hundreds, thousands of communities, right? Um, and so what is, the, what is the shared intention of an intentional city, right? As opposed to an intentional community? I would say that whereas an intentional community can have a much more focused intention, like we're here to do this vegan permaculture thing and live in this communal way and we all eat together in the dining hall and we're all kind of one big happy family. In an intentional city, there's there is room for there to be multiple intentional communities that don't necessarily agree with each other on everything. And that's okay. So if they're not agreeing with each other on everything, what are they in agreement on? What is the shared intention of the intentional city? I'm just opening it up as a question, right? And with that, I'm gonna go on mute, pass the talking feather around. I want to hear more. I'm not not ready to. Oh no, I'm happy to talk more. Yet. Yeah, I just I just didn't want to, uh, you know, be like dominating the talking feather. So, um, so I would say that the shared intention of the intentional city, if it were up to me, um, which it's not. That's the whole idea of a city: is it's not up to one person; it's up to a whole big community of communities. Is, uh, in a word, global transformation. And if I had to unpack that, I would say, look, the highest priority stuff is very simple saving, healing, and transforming life on earth. How simple is that? Saving, healing, and transforming life on earth. We first need to save the patient, right? Before we can get the patient into that super cool self-help group, right? About not drinking and driving or whatever. We first need to save the patient. The patient's in intensive care right now right? The planet is overheating exponentially. We just can't, we simply cannot support life in an exponentially overheating planet, number one. Number two, we humans are, have become this termite species that just chopping down the Amazon, the Congo, Bali, Indonesia, all over the place and making way for animal agriculture because there's good money in beef and pork and, and, you know, whatever else, right? Um, so we are adding, we're dumping kerosene onto an already raging wildfire that's raging out of control. So in order to save life on earth, we actually need to transform humanity. We need to change the game. So I'm just saying the things that are kind of, for me, just sort of obvious about a shared intention, we need to save, heal, and transform life on earth right? Now, how do we do that? In what order? With what spiritual framework? With what, you know, collective intelligence framework? That's all up for discussion. And that's why we need a big old city or a big new city in order to, you know, make room for all these different communities and perspectives and ways of looking at the world. Um, because right out of the box, I don't think we're going to have consensus. So we need a city within which to do this, within which different communities can talk with each other. And we need, you know, public spaces like the city of Athens had the forum, right? A big public open space where people could go and talk with each other and converse and this and that and share ideas and debate and whatever else they wanted to do, right? And so um, in this intentional city that we're envisioning, I imagine public spaces like one of them that I put in my email, I call the abandoned university. Why the abandoned university? Because I feel like universities generally have abandoned 
the original vision of a university, which was to bring knowledge together. What universities have done now is they've just gone, they've gone too much, they've gone overboard in, in the paradigms of capitalism and separation and hoarding, hoarding knowledge, hoarding credit, um, creating these silos, isolating themselves from each other when what we really need is integration. We need the holistic. So I just call it the abandoned university. And another thing that I think is crucial is there needs to be um, some acknowledgement, some fundamental acknowledgement of what is most urgent right now. Right. And what's most urgent right now is to stop the devastation, stop the exponential planetary overheating, stop the decimation of rainforests and ecosystems generally making way for animal agriculture, etc. You know, stop our destructive impulses, stop the violence, stop the hatred, stop the racism, stop the separation, stop the totalitarianism, you know, just stop. If we could just stop and pause for a minute. So, you know, the, and in acknowledgement of that, we've created, I'm, I'm proposing we create this um, amusement park in the intentional city in the clouds, essentially a virtual amusement park that would have certain rides, the idea of which is that they're life changing. And one of the promise of these rides is that when you go on one of these rides, you never come back. You never come back. And that's a poetic way of saying you never come back the way you were. You come back transformed. And one of those rides that, I, that for my taste should be the first of those rides um, is a ride I call El Culo del Diablo. El Culo del Diablo, right? Um, which means, you know, the devil's butthole. And because here's the devil, you know, about to rip a giant fart at the planet and light the fart and basically barbecue us to death with exponential planetary overheating. And we need to think of it and look at it in such devastating, disgusting terms, because it, it's, it's a ride to wake people up. So explore the depths of El Culo del Diablo a la Guy McPherson, right? So part of that ride is watching a Guy McPherson presentation together and really getting steeped in the reality of exponential planetary overheating, right? The next ride after that that I propose, and I know I'm, get, I'm getting a little bit into the weeds here, but in a way this gets to the essence of what I'm saying should be our shared agreements, what I would propose to be our shared agreements for um, the intentional city is you know echoing what President Biden said in his inaugural address uh, yesterday of facing reality, facing the truth. He says, I will always level with you. Well, it's time we leveled with each other, all of us, and acknowledge that our house is on fire. And so after El Culo del Diablo, the next logical ride for me is the devil's fire extinguisher. We're going to take a giant fire, fire extinguisher and shove it deep up the aforementioned culo and stop the aforementioned torching of the planet. And that mega solution is, it's actually several fold, but the primary pillar for cooling the planet is solar radiation management, full stop. We cannot do it without solar radiation management. And in fact, solar radiation management could do it alone. It can cool the planet all by itself, okay? So one ride takes you deep into the depths of hell, not just to the depths of hell, but right to the devil himself and not just to the devil, but right to that kind of special place within the devil, el culo, el culo del diablo, right? Which is, I mean, again, we got to call it for what it is. We, we, enough dancing around it. It's like these people who dance around Trump the dude needs to be tried and prosecuted and he needs I don't to bring in politics. I wouldn't recommend. Uh, okay. Then let's, okay. I'll let, thank you. Thank you're you. always assuming that everyone has the same viewpoint. That's not true. That's a very good. We'll have different perspectives. No, that, that, that's a very good point. I was just kind of making an analogy. I don't want to really go there. So, but the analogy is we, we, we got to stop dancing around the most crucial uh, issues of our time 
And the two and most, I'd also offer yeah. that, you know, if when you said earlier that, you know, we have to decide what are the most urgent or the most important issues, I think in a city, I don't I don't think you should necessarily decide that because people will be coming from all different perspectives and, and bringing their expertise. Like this is your expertise and passion and others will have a different mission that they're here for. And it might be equally important um, to the whole. And, and uh, so this, the point of a city would be like people uniting and bringing their, their mission and passion and the thing that they're you know, here for. Um, and not everybody's gonna have the same thing that's as urgent to them or that's you know, their right lined up with uh, as everybody else. <laughs> so uh, I'd leave that more open, I think more fluid. You know, interesting. And this actually brings me to the topic of, say, COVID, right? So, um, you know, in New Zealand, they took an approach of, hey, we're going to totally lock down and just stop this virus in its tracks. Whereas in the United States, we took kind of a more free and open, everyone can choose how they want to deal with COVID on their own. And now we've got 400,000 people dead. So here's where I'm going with that. Uh, definitely freedom of speech, freedom of expression. I get it, I get it, I get it. But at the end of the day, right? Um, do we want to work toward some form of consensus within the city, such that if a COVID, heaven forbid, should come around, that we within the city have a way of dealing with it, and talking about it, and saying, you know, do we just leave it up to everyone to deal with COVID however they feel like it? Or are we going to, you know, basically say, hey, we need to build towards consensus here. And this is actually urgent that we reach consensus. You know, are we going to deal with this? And if so, how? And what is the most urgent? And I think that's, the, I think, but what, but where I think the synthesis is between these two perspectives of, hey, let everyone come as they are and let there be discussion about the most urgent. I think the synthesis between those two perspectives is precisely the forum. Because if at the forum there's someone who's soliloquizing, making a speech, leading a talk, and it's about something super urgent and it's attractive and people are coming, let it be, right? You know, are we going to go around and force everyone into that conversation and force everyone? It, it doesn't make any sense, right? And so um, I think, I think that anyway, that's what I think about the synthesis of these two seemingly opposing perspectives. One of come as you are and think and believe whatever you want and focus on whatever you want, right? Having said that, the intentional city in the clouds, the intention is change making, transformation saving and healing and transforming life on earth. I mean, would you, would you, Dana, for example, would you agree with that or is, is even that too restricting? Good question. Um, sometimes I tend to think less of the saving and healing part and more of the transforming because that's more of a, like the saving and healing implies that we're, it's just coming from a different place, but you know, I'm open to it. I, I know that that's been the theme all along. Um, sometimes I'm, I get tired of healing, <laughs> you know, like, and I'm saying that being a healing practitioner myself, but the word healing is quite limited. I'm more about like raising consciousness, coming into a whole new paradigm, anchoring a new dimension of consciousness on the planet. Um, that, that's more the kind of energy that I represent or, or tend to think in terms of less about fixing, less about saving, less about healing, more about like transformation and um, uh, anchoring, anchoring in the new. So, um, you know, if you're, if you're thinking about new wordings, maybe I could contribute to that, but you know, you, you got the transforming in there. So, so that's, well, uh, you know, and, and I'm going to interrupt a little bit. Sorry. The, the, you know, saving, healing, and transforming. You know, we're we're not leaving we're not leaving transforming out, and, and we're not making it any less important or more important. Everybody can take their level of importance from each of those, and you know, work to their strengths. So, that's yeah, I, I just look. acknowledge that too. Um, yeah, I just express sort of more the perspective that I tend to come from. See, see, that's exactly why why this is great. You know why it's a city and multiple people. So, so your voice and you play to your strength to transform me, which is awesome. You do it so well. 
Right, and you could have different rides like that have different focuses. Some could be more about consciousness and like educating people about new things or, or whatever. Um, it would be cool to have like some sort of virtually virtual reality based rides or experiences. I wonder if Michael would be a good person to invent some of those. Totally, um, totally. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I love it. I love it. I, I, th I think you're. I think you're hitting the nail on the head, and you're also exposing um, what in landmark we would call a racket. I've been kind of running a racket inside my own head that if I were to expose it, which I'm going to do right now, would go like this. Hey, you know, you need to. You got to see things my way because I think that I have got my finger on the pulse. Why don't you see things my way? What don't you get about exponential planetary overheating? We can work it out. Just listen to me. <laughs> and in right, the end, right. in the end, what's that? It's totalitarianism. So, well, you know. I think your city idea is a much broader vision, isn't it? It's a, it's a well, much vision. And, so, and I think the first step for me as a resident of the city is to go find the, the spiritual therapist in the city and get my own head screwed on right, you know, <laughs> and get off my totalitarian track. I'm just poking fun at myself because I can. <laughs> um, and, no, but really, I'm, I'm just exposing that my own fallacy and saying, no, it's got to be this way, saving, healing, and transforming life on earth. And we've got to start with exponential planetary overheating. <laughs> And feeding everyone that might make sense to me but not to everyone i mean so, if you're going to do that why create the city you're already doing that you do that right. all the time you're, you're already doing it in the group that you're doing it in so just continue right 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 so i think you've i think you've told you're hitting the nail on the head dana the idea of the city is to make it broad much much broader and so it, so if not the banner that i was saying about saving healing and transforming you know, what would it say at the gates of the city, right? Would it say, this is the city of change making? This is the city of transformation? This is the city of love? You know, what what could, should, would it be? Um, I, I wasn't totally against that first one because um, <laughs> it included sort of a broad range, but it could, you could call it the city of planetary transformation or, um, City of Planetary Awakening. Uh, I, I could think of some more, maybe not on the spot, but. Uh, well, and here's the thought, here's the thought. Just like if you go to United Nations Plaza and you see that big oval with all the different flags, mm -hmm. right? What if at the gates of the city, so to speak, you had not one banner that said, this is it, but a bunch of different proposed banners, right? And you know, so what is the banner of the city? Well, there is no one banner. Here's a bunch of ones that different groups are proposing. Would you like to propose one? You know, here's a Sharpie and here's some butcher paper, right? <laughs> Maybe that, that's a little confusing. Like, I, I, I mean, for the overall title, I think there should be, you know, one so people know what it is, but you could have other forums where people are like, you know, brainstorming and contributing ideas. But I don't think the, the whole motive of it should be that fluid because then it's confusing oh, so that's I mean, really yeah the the saving healing and transforming kind of covers it if you just use transforming i think that includes saving and healing so that could cover it um you know like i think i think you got sort of the sense of what it's about and uh, okay fair yeah. enough fair enough i mean yeah, I'm yeah. on the broadest level yeah. It should just be something that's broad enough and encompassing enough, but still has a, you know, tells people right away what what it's about. So um, something like Planetary Transformation communicates, the initial title also communicates. Um, I think any of those is probably good to start with. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Um, I'm going to pull up some slides here because I can't I uh, I've got some imagery around well anyway I'll, I'll find it in parallel but it's it's around this idea I came up with an acronym saving healing 
and intentionally transforming the acronym is s-h-i-t we can say this 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 intentional city is the shit it's all about oh, saving God. healing and intentionally <laughs> transforming life oh on God. earth i don't know about that acronym <laughs> I like the I see, I see better. <laughs> I see, I, I see, I see. Yeah, no, I like that too. Because um, you could also call it conscious transformation. Yeah, Is yeah, I, that's right, that's right. Or... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't think we should have shit as an acronym. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's funny, but maybe. <laughs> no, no, fair, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, I've, 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 I've universally gotten pushback on that when I've raised it. So I think it's, I'm, I'm seeing the writing on the wall. Um, so um, yeah, so I, I, so I think, I think we've basically got it with saving, healing and transforming. That seems pretty encompassing, you know, and then we can have some clarifying statements below there. We mean conscious transformation because obviously the world is transforming all the time. I think it's just been le definitely less than conscious, certainly less than global consciousness driven. Um, so uh, I think we have a pretty good feel for that, right? Um, and so let's talk about some other aspects if we're ready to kind of move on from there, from the banner at the entrance or, or the what is it kind of thing. Um, I think um, one thing is just a, a, a tremendous openness. So as long as you self-identify um, as basically being hip with the, the idea of this intentional city in the clouds, I see, I see, um, welcome, you know, and then we'll, we'll sort it out once you've unpacked and set up, you know, set up camp, right? Um, and speaking of which, one thing that I'm proposing, and this is pretty radical, basically everything I'm talking about here is radical or we're talking about is radical, but one thing is to have a bridge to the, uh, to the intentional uh, community, uh, the intentional city rather. And yeah, there, I saw that, but I don't understand exact, I mean, it sounds like a nice idea, but I don't understand exactly what the bridge is in practicality. And Oh yeah. Yeah, totally. Well, you know, we could we could argue that this conversation right now is part of the bridge because what we're doing is we're introducing it, we're playing with it, and we're saying, "Hey, here's the idea. Come play with us." Right? It's 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 both an invitation, it's an introduction, and um, a, a guided tour. It's just a it's a gentle way for for the uninitiated to come and get to know the place. Like, you know, famously Manhattan, if you just show up in Manhattan, it, it seems unfriendly because people don't really know how to go with the flow of Manhattan, right? Because they don't live there. They're not part of it. And, you know, the, the, the proverbial, the, the joke about it, it you know, the, the, the perennial joke is somebody's there in Manhattan kind of confused and they go up to somebody and say, excuse me, do you know what time it is? And they look at their watch and they say, yes. And they keep on walking. Right. That's kind of, <laughs> really? the, yeah, that's the joke about Manhattan. Right. Mm -hmm. And it, it just shows this, this clash of cultures. Whereas in a Midwestern town, they'd say, well, it's about 10 minutes to noon. And why did you know that there's going to be a barbecue down the road here? And, you know, <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> but Manhattan, everyone's just kind of doing their thing. And so um, we, we don't want people's introduction to be that where they, they feel immediately like an outsider. We want it to be an inclusive thing. And that's why I call it El Puente because as a Hispanic person myself, uh, born in Mexico, my, lived my formative growing up years, uh, most of them in Mexico, um, I identify much more closely with Mexican culture specifically and more broadly Hispanic. I'm just gonna say Hispanic culture which spans Spain and all the different countries that speak Spanish. Um, why? Because in my experience, in the Hispanic culture is plural, there's not just one, but the common thread is one of inclusivity, openness, welcoming, right? So even if you're an outsider, right, and 
you, you come into a family gathering or a celebration or whatever, you're not treated as an outsider. You're welcomed. Hey, come, come, you know, let's, let's talk, let's share. And let's say that, that the, the conversation is about something important like exponential planetary overheating, for example, uh, since you raised it, just kidding. Um, you know, then <laughs> uh, one of the things in that's, and I'm talking in general terms, right? The reality is there's thousands of cultures within the Hispanic world and even within Mexico, each of the 32 states in Mexico really has their own culture and certain cities have their own cultures and all this. Um, so this is broad brushstrokes, but in our culture, it's not okay that you not get something. And this is often experienced as this sort of overboiling passion, right? So when we have a conversation, we get very passionate. What, the, what we're really saying is, hey, it's not okay that you not get this. This is important. And so I'm gonna talk with you until you get it, right? But in a way that's friendly and that's inviting. Of Maybe I'm the one who needs to get something, but bottom line, let's talk until we reach something, some form of consensus, right? Whereas in American culture, because I'm also American, um, we, th there tends to be this, um, hey, if you don't get it, you know, piss off, I don't really care, <laughs> right? There's just kind of this built-in separation, whereas in Hispanic cultures, there's a built-in, you know, trend towards unity and togetherness. And so, part of, so why I call the bridge to uh, ICIC El Puente is because it's something where I don't think, I, I really think Hispanic culture is a huge support to us. Even if you're not Hispanic, even if you don't speak Spanish, you don't have to know a single word in Spanish. That's okay. You know, se habla inglés. We also speak English. So we're happy to you know, it, it's the culture, it's the spirit of it. Um, and I embody it. And, and, you know, you can tell in within seconds of talking with me, you know, I'm really, you know, uh, I care about you. And I care about what you think and feel. And I care that we understand each other, right? And I'm very passionate about certain things. And I'm going to share them with you. And I hope you get it. And if you don't, I'm happy to talk, right? So it's like this, it's, it's this really radical welcoming and radical inclusivity and um, really wanting, wanting for you to see just like I see, I see. I want you to have that experience. You, whoever what, you what it, Can I ask, what do they do in Hispanic culture if, if somebody talks about something and then somebody else brings a different perspective and there's not complete agreement or like, or if one person like sees what the other is saying, but may have a different viewpoint or perspective. It's very simple. What, what we do, do is then? we simply increase the volume. We just turn up the volume. Bring, and bring more food. <laughs> <laughs> more food, more tequila. <laughs> and we, we just we just increase the volume. We just talk about it and we get passionate about it. Right. And, and, and then, but like what happens if it ends and there's still different viewpoints? Well, that's when we break out the pistolas de muerte, you know? It, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I speak Italian, by the way, so I understand the Spanish. Of course, so. you're no, and really, I was just talking with my uncle yesterday, whose wife is from from Greece, and my uncle, of course, is Hispanic as well. And I said, listen, it's not just a Hispanic thing; it's also a Mediterranean thing. You know, Southern Europe, North Africa, Middle East, uh, and the Middle Eastern countries really embrace this. Um, so it's it's really something that that permeates probably most cultures, and it's it's kind of you know missing from I would say the Anglo-Saxon cultures and probably certain Asian cultures as well, um, but they probably have their own form of it, right? So for example, you know I I, I can talk all kinds of trash about Anglo-Saxon this and that. But the British have their own culture around dialogue and debate, and it's very rigorous and this and that, and it may seem cold and uncaring, but you know, it, it also has its charm, let's face it, it has its, its beauty. And so um, in a way, I'm just kind of, you know, you gotta call it something. And rather than just give it yet another English name cooked up by yet another white guy, you know, I'm saying, hey, let's mix it up a bit. And let's let's throw in the Hispanic. What, 
yeah what is it <laughs> practically oh, what, 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 is, what, what is the bridge what is the, so the bridge it's 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 a conversation how does it look like it, it what looks is just it? i mean you're 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 looking at it. it it's this it's 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 this conversation that, that we're having right now this is part of el puente because we're talking about ICIC, we're not quite there yet, but we're talking about it, and we're getting there. We're crossing the bridge together. Okay, so like once ICIC is established, then how does the bridge come in practically? Like, what does it look like? Yeah, I mean, totally. what does it look like in, in terms of someone's experience? Totally, totally. So, so experientially, you would come to this Zoom link, like that we all came to right now except the bridge would be in a breakout room and we'd say hey listen if you're interested in you know the bridge to icic go to breakout room too here here's a link to it um, on the other hand if you're already in icic and you want to go to you know the the amusement park called togetherland with all these cool rides like el culo del diablo etc you know go to breakout room three if you want to go to the abandoned university breakout room four if you want to go to the public forum, breakout room five, whatever, you know, and there could just be dozens of different things going on, um, as well as um, a page, a Google Doc with links to all the different Zoom rooms and their respective breakout rooms throughout the city, kind of like a map to the city, a white pages, yellow pages combination to the city. Remember when those two would come together? It'd just be one big book, right? Yeah. So, you know, we need the big book for the city um, so that people can find their way around, click around, zoom around. And, um, you know, we talk, it's, we talk about the city in the clouds, but the, but the reality is there's different layers. Oh, Ananda's joining. Perfect. <laughs> Ananda, welcome. Welcome, Ananda. You're on mute and that's okay. And Ananda, I'm very excited for you to meet Dana. I'm also going to text Michael so he doesn't escape from us. I'm and not sure how much longer I can be here. I just like balancing a lot of different things. So um, I can't just hang out forever. Gotcha. No, <laughs> I've been no, here no, about no. an hour. <laughs> All righty. Hey, gang. Or I could pop hey. in at different times. Hi, Ananda. Aloha. Ananda, welcome hey and meet Dana. I think you two were, if not separated at birth, uh, separated from some intentional community. Oh. Both, no, no, really, you're, you're both just super amazing. And I'm really happy to introduce you to uh, Dana's checking in. She's, you know, in the middle of some big stuff going on in her world. So she may not be able to stay super long or she might be able to come back. Claire is joining us right now and she is super my goodness all these goddesses are showing up was there like some goddess memo that went out this morning that I missed Godzilla oh, Godzilla Godzilla <laughs> you said it you anyway, called it in we are recording right yeah. um and let me welcome Claire Claire you're on mute and that's okay and we're recording and uh anyway we're um we're talking about ICIC and El Puente and other related stuff. Ananda, I got, I only read your email from yesterday after I had sent out the email to everyone about oh, I figured. Yeah. ICIC. So anyway, we'll, we'll work it out. We'll work it out. But right now, we're, while people are coming and going, I propose we just kind of hang and go with the flow. We are recording and we're talking about ICIC and El Puente and the amusement park <laughs> called Togetherland. And the ride I'm so excited about called El Culo del Diablo and other good stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Well, I can't wait to see what we do next together. You know, yeah. we're an astounding human race. We now have uh, all of the stars lined up. Everything is lined up in the universe for us to proceed and, uh, you know, astonish ourselves claire welcome claire when you showed up I, I don't know if you heard my comment that it's like all the goddesses are showing up at once i don't know like <laughs> did some goddess memo go out that i didn't get but anyway now that you're all here welcome so excited what? to see you all what's icic icic um 
it, it's an acronym, but it's also an experience. And we're recording now, just so everybody knows. And if you ever want to pause recording, just do this. You know the drill. But the, the, the acronym is Intentional City. All right, we all know about intentional communities. Well, it's time for something bigger, an intentional city. An intentional city in the clouds, right? And that's what I see. I see that's what the acronym is. And that's, you know, its definition. Um, but it also has an experiential component, which is when you arrive, when you truly arrive in the city and are able to look around and take it in and say, ah, your experience is, I see, I see, <laughs> right? And I see you. <laughs> I see you, exactly. Well, that's like, you know, have you heard of Hazrat Inayat Khan, the great Sufi master? So he asked everyone to build the universel which is a universal temple, but it was to be built in the space, in the Akashic space first, and then on the ground. So it sounds similar. Yeah, and there's a prayer. Yeah, O oh, thou who art the cre uh, builder of, the, of our bodies, hearts, and souls, build with thine own hands the universal, our temple for thy divine message of love, harmony, and beauty. And there is actually a temple, I believe, uh, Universal. It's in uh, Suresnes in France, where he lived, because he was married to an American and he was from India, and they weren't allowed to be mixed race living in this country, so he ended up living in in uh, France. But that so was that's his really goddess. Cool. Well, bringing it from the divine here, you know. At first, it's in the consciousness, and then it comes becomes real in the flesh. That is so cool. And I want to welcome my sister, Kate. Kate, welcome. We are recording. Victory T is in the house. And Kate, just before you showed up, I was saying all these goddesses are showing up at once and then you show up. And it's just like, it's so perfect. Anyway, we're recording and we're talking about I see, I see. And Claire just said something very profound from the Akashic that first it exists in the Akashic before you bring it kind of down to earth. The city in the clouds is perfect, the intentional city, because we're creating it in the Akashic. And in fact, at the beginning of this conversation, we were talking about with Dana about how in a way this is kind of like Lemuria, but it's Lemuria in the clouds, right? This intentional city in the clouds. How cool is that? Super cool. Yeah, yeah, Ananda. So this uh, baby was born uh, as a result of several very electric connection meetings in the last week. Um, it started on Monday. It picked up on Tuesday. It went on until <laughs> it just kept it just kept su surprising us more and more. And where this came from. It came from a true um, desire that we're getting um, from these conference calls that we're, we're desiring to be unified. We're desiring to be connected and be one. And last week, people came on the call that had connections with various different systems groups and, um, and app groups and organizations and and um and 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 founders and i just it was just astounding so we declared that whatever we're desiring right now is already happening it's already invented um and so we we talked so much about the power of us uniting together and creating sort of an umbrella organization or a city in the cloud that covers all of us and protects all of us and by us i mean we're talking about the front line people that are on the front lines of humanity the change makers the people that have been active or praying and or praying and sourcing and creating and inventing and um manifesting and all of that has been happening in the same energy for a long time and we discovered that we didn't have the the, we have the and, lots of ands, and, 
and we need a the. So let me explain that a little further. The the is the one city organization umbrella that we all funnel all of our money and resources through, and it comes back to us in ways of grants or gifts or what or time or whatever that we need, it comes back to us. And so uh, we've got the the, that's the the. It's the one, it's the one common source, one common funnel where it all comes through. Hi, Michael. <laughs> I, I'm uh, in the middle of a sentence, but I wanted to greet you as you, as you came in. Welcome, so, Michael. We are recording. Carry on, Ananda. Thank Carry you. On. So the the is the city, uh, intentional city that in the clouds we're creating. And, um, and the and is everything that all of you are already doing or, or want to do more of. And there's millions and millions of people that want to know an and and don't know we're out there. So the ands would be things like, um, you know, what Jamin is involved with is feeding all the people or, you know, veganism or, um, or um, you know, I'm sure if we went around the room here, everybody would talk about the and they're, in, they're involved in somehow they're connected to some source that's creating change, some source that's part of the, of the divine plan really. And so we wanna encourage everybody in an and to come to the the and support one funnel where we imagine the possibilities are endless but what we imagined last week was let's just say for for an experiment for a test that we um that we all agree that we're going to come to the uh, to the, the and you don't have to sacrifice much you don't have to give up much of your and because we want the ands to keep going and but we want the the to be real key. So what if we had an experiment where everyone came to the the with 30 minutes a week of time, which is the most important resource right now that we have on the planet, because we have enough time, people putting in enough time, we'll get everything we need and want. And then the other thing is um, they came to the the with just a dollar a month donation on a regular auto pay um, schedule so that the city can depend on you know city funds coming in on a regular basis just like taxes go into real cities you know our 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 um contributions come in uh to the city through through all the ands and all the ands are all separate right now and they all are talking about unity and they're all talking about separateness and they're all talking about isolation and they're all talking about everything else but the the so I, we wanted to try an experiment to see if we could get, you know, uh, a mass, uh, a mass uh, enrollment into the city and, um, and come with 30 minutes a week of time and then a dollar a month on auto pay. And we imagine ourselves as really not very far between now and we have a million members coming in at a dollar a month. Every single month, we have a million dollars to spend. And you can write grants to the the. You can write grants to the city. And you can get back uh, money you need to run your and. Because, you know, most of the time, everybody out there is looking for money right now. I mean, I run a radio station. I need some money. <laughs> and, you know, it's coming out of my pocket. I'm not paying anything out of my time. And so I need some money. But I, I, I would love to go around and ask all you guys, could you contribute some money to my radio station? And, you know, and, and thank you. I appreciate it so much. Oh, that's so nice. However, I wouldn't really necessarily plan on giving you anything back. I, I just need the money to, you know, pay for the expenses I have. So in the city, we all come in together. It's an, it's an experiment. And how, how unified can we really get in this city, intentional city in the clouds? And what if we did that and we suddenly, in a very short amount of time, it went viral, we had a million members coming in at a dollar a month. And, and, and we could sit in this very same meeting and say, wow, our city council has a million dollars to spend. Let's consult together on the best way to spend that. And, and then, you know, uh, you know, uh, Dana might say, well, we've gotten some applications for some grants and, and here they are, let's, let's, uh, let's support this one and this one and this one and this one. And, and, um, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jamin may come in and say, well, um, 
I've, I've had some requests for some time. People want to get a radio station going, but they don't have enough time to do 24 hours um, radio. So I've, I've had people volunteer some time. And so some magical technical wizard would put together the program in the city where they would match up the person that can, um, you know, be a radio host with the person who needs a radio host. And so, <laughs> you know, they, you would match the time and you would match the, the resources and, and you'd match the money. At the same time, you're not taking anything away from your and because your and is very, very, very important. And the reason why we thought people might trip up and not come to the, the city, the city is because they uh, they don't want another thing on their plate. You know, they don't want to have to sacrifice any of the time they're putting into their and because already they're putting their time into their and uh, voluntarily. I don't really know anybody that's got a job that's doing what they love right now. <laughs> you know, and if you do like, hey, let me know who your boss is. I don't know who that is. But uh, <laughs> so um, so it's a what if experiment. What if we could do this? What if uh, we talked to some organizations um, last week on this conference call, people would come in representing organizations that are already looking for an umbrella organization. And there's several of those. So we'd put them all on the same call, put them in the same room and say, okay, all you people looking for an umbrella organization, how can we collaborate together to create the city? And, and, what, would, and what would that take? And then what's in it for me? You know, that's an old expression from the old world. What's in it for me? That's how our, that's how our, our uh, the greedy people got ahead is because they want, what's in it for me? But after a while, you get to ask that question. Okay, if I'm going to give a dollar a month and 30 minutes a week, um, that's great. But I, I don't want another thing on my plate. My time is completely full. People will usually give the time before they give the money, which is why we're all here. But what if it's both? And what if we do it? And what if all of the change-making organizations in the world caught on to the fact that we have one funnel for all of the resources to come through, meaning time, talent, and, and, and money. And if you need money to run your organization or you need money to paint a picture of a poster, um, you know, um, you get to just put in a request for that. And we get to give money back to our own people. Because we were wondering from the very beginning, why aren't we taking care of our own? You know, why is everybody out there trying to crowdfund and fundraise and all that? And why are we separate? Why are we doing that? We're at the time of unity right now. And so let's not be separate. Let's not be broke. Let's not be overworked in time. Seriously, it's a really easy, easy formula. And we have a whole city. You know, the city will have a university and the city will have a, have, have a, a central bank, if you will, and will have a time bank where you can actually cash in some time or you can give some time, you know, and you're, it's all about helping the needs of everyone. So I'm just imagining for a minute that I put in my 30 minutes of time and, and I just put it kind of general. I just want to help anybody in any organization that needs a little bit of my, my clerical help, let's say. Um, and I, and so I would get requests from organizations that I've never heard of. I get to meet new people. I get to be, you know, um, in service to what, what they need me for. You know, they need to, to do a data entry. That's okay. I'll do that for 30 minutes a month, a, a week, I mean. And, um, and I get to experience all these different ands out there, which I would have never been on the inside of if I just kept on my and. So... <laughs> I, I run uh, the Future Now radio station, and I started it because I started seeing a lot of people in the resource-based economy arena um, all talking uh, about uh, getting getting to a transition in time when when money is just much easier on us, or maybe even free. And um, we have these hundreds of organizations in there. And so I thought, oh, well, they need to be united. So the Future Now radio station starts to unite all these people in the same arena. Well, now we're starting to reach out to other arenas. And, and, and the whole point of our radio station is to make education available to the general public that don't know about any of these change-making organizations. And it's time they found one and married one and got busy. 
because you know the time thing we all need to put in more time in order for us to get anywhere so anyway that's the energy and the kind of the come from and the and and the and the intention and the dreaming and the creativity that 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 started the in the intentional city in the clouds and uh and that can be so um metaphorical just like Jamin says you could say oh I see I see I see this oh yeah of course I see this and then there's the other I see like intentional and then the other I see of of um a city in the clouds meaning it belongs to all of us and it's accessible and it covers all of us and it protects all of us and it's going to have an, an enormous amount of wealth in time resources and actual money so we're going to and, and so anybody who's got an and organization i'm going to guarantee you they're headed somewhere towards a society that doesn't need to depend so much on money and here's the thing what if we our or our people our kind all the change makers in the world what if we didn't make money so important anymore and it just came to you because we put in a request for a grant that everybody pitched in on so that I could have my grant. There's the what if. I bet we could do it. Don't get me started. <laughs> well, actually, I already got started, but there it is. That's what it all came from. And it's moving lickety split time. And, and the reason that is, is because just like just like a, a, a seedling spends a long time under the earth getting warm and getting all warmed up and getting brave enough to peek its little head up above the earth and then all of a sudden boom it's a flower or it's a plant of some sort and that's what's happening here with us we've been percolating and brewing and growing i, I know people that have been doing this work for 50 years you know, most of this work started back in in since world war ii I mean, if you start looking at the books and the availability of, of materials since World War II, we've been a very massive growing world. Only thing is, a few things stepped in to separate us, which is, you know, the governments and the corporations and the money and the greed and all that came along and, and, and we lost track of where we were going with this. But the point is, uh, this has been percolating for a long time. And now we have proof because none of us can't can list all of the change making organizations on the planet right now i remember one time i i, I went to a yeah i went to a um a screening and um it was a organization i forget now what it was but at the end they started scrolling the names of organizations that were doing good for the world and it scrolled really slow at first you know like at the end of the movie and I thought, oh, you know, that's interesting. I didn't know there were so many organizations and it scrolled a little faster, a little faster. And pretty soon it was spinning like this and it went on to the length of a football field. I saw that. Wasn't that at Bioneers? Oh, yeah, Bioneers, thank you. Oh, I could not remember. There's another thing, the Bioneers, they're all organized already, you know? Uh, they're organized on their own. They're looking for their own funding. They're looking for their own time. They're an amazing group of people. They're 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 ahead of the game as far as you know agriculture and 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 uh, you know all that. So here's about, the thing. We asked ourselves a serious question, and we expect to put ourselves a serious answer. The serious question is why aren't we taking care of our own? Why aren't we united? Why don't we have enough time and enough money to do the work we need to do? why is that and so we said well it's because it has to start so it's starting around here with these little conference calls and it's got a it's got a name and a title and a vision and we can't wait to see what we do next so i think i feel like i've talked plenty but i'm still so excited i probably could go for a long time more but i just want you guys all to know the energy of what's happened up to this point which has only been a very few days it a, a few days ago, we decided to unite ourselves as a world organization and as a city. And look at this. I can't wait to see what you do next. I'll complete for a while. I know I'm going on, but I'm just so much in love with the idea of the Aloha, unity. Aloha, Ananda. Can I comment? Oh, please. Aloha. Nice to meet you. Nice to see everyone. 
Um, yeah, I agree with your your vision, and I've been saying the same thing for quite a while now. Like when I go to all these events that they have, like like uh, for example, this summer there was World Unity Week. I was a part of that. I'm seeing all these different people and their initiatives and their little organizations coming together for World Unity Week, and each talking about their own thing. And then I'm like, well, is there some way to sort of like bring all this together instead of everyone just doing their own little tiny and thing? Uh, on the side and then leaving World Unity Week and going back to doing their own little thing. So, uh, and the same thing at other other conventions, especially this year that I've been a part of because there's been a lot of that kind of thing going on. Mm. Um, but there hasn't really been a lot of, um, you know, how can we, like I see people doing things with very similar themes and instead of just like kind of consolidating, they're still just doing it kind of in their own isolated way. Um, I think part of that could be a bit of an ego thing, you know, like that their thing is the most important and the way they're doing it is what has to be and, you know, they're already attached to their particular vision, but I think there's a lot of power in, in the unification and at least, at least bringing people together to know and have awareness and, and then those, those collaborations can form uh, naturally in an inspired way. Um, so I've been kind of on that same uh, <laughs> that same thing, like of let's you know bring everything together, and uh, it's so much more powerful and coherent that way. I talk a lot about coherence in my work, but um, and I have a group right now that I'm leading. It's called the Water Connection Study Group. It's Ooh. based on my passion of 30 years of understanding water from an energetic perspective as an energetic communicator, and uh, I believe that that. Uh, a new understanding of water is going to be a next step in humanity's evolution. And I would love to have more funds for my group. I do it completely on nothing. And I would like to spend more time facilitating my group, which I can't because I have to survive. So, yeah. um, so it would be nice to have funding for our group, even, even a modest amount, you know? And uh, so I could devote more of my time to that instead of figuring out, you know, because it's all about time and energy and, and uh, you know, I have to support myself, but I also want to put a lot more of my focus into that. And I'm also working collaborative, co collaboratively on some projects having to do with sound healing and vibrational healing in general and bringing those technologies into the fields of education and medicine. And um, I'd like to also, you know, devote more of my time to, to that as well, because it all kind of ties into this new vibrational paradigm that I've been passionate about for most of my life. But, um, anyway, those are some of my thoughts. So I'm glad uh, glad to hear this vision and be part of it. So let me just ask you a, um, a question. Um, you have your and and it sounds absolutely beautiful. If I asked you, would you come and join our city for a dollar a month and um, 30 minutes a week and if you could write a grant uh, to the foundation, what what would you want the grant for? What would you ask for? That's, a, that's another um, question or comment that I had the 30 minutes a week. Like I, we I just was- made that up. We're gonna come to what the real number is, but we made that okay. up just for the experiment. <laughs> is, but that's not like one big meeting of everybody coming together for 30 minutes, right? Or is that just like individual time devoted to the the city or because I was thinking 30 minutes is too short for a meeting of all the different groups coming together and, and once a week is too frequent for that and it would be better to have one larger like where everybody in the city could talk a little bit about what their facet is doing and then collaborations could form like that that type of meeting would probably take a little bit more time than 30, 30 minutes passes like nothing but maybe we could do that monthly or on some other schedule where, where the whole city comes together or is invited to come together? Well, the 30 um, minutes, is that more like a service? Well, we, yeah, or? you'd give 30 minutes of service a, a week and do your, and do your and. The thing is, the reason why we came to those numbers, we made them up. What's going to happen is we're going to consult with everybody who's interested in consulting about it. And we're going to come to a, a, a conclusion about what those numbers are. 
But the reason we kept them so small and doable is because we don't want anybody to not come to the city because they've got an and going on. We didn't want to put more on your plate. We wanted to make it easier for you to get funds and easier for you to get some of that time. Because you have to remember if everybody's putting in 30 minutes a week and you need something from somebody, you can have that. It'll be yours because you're a member of the city. What do you think, Jamin? Am I, how, how close am I on that? <laughs> you know, it, it sounds very interesting. Kate's had her hand up for a while. I'd love to oh, pass the okay. talking feather around and Michael just raised his hand. So if you want, we can do like before where I'll manage the queue. And we also keep coming back to Ananda because I just really want to acknowledge and honor your leadership here, Ananda. And I think it's, it's just right on the money, so to speak. Um, so you let me know when you're ready for me to do the queue and I'll call on Kate and then Michael. Okay, let's go with the queue. All right. And by Kate, the way, yeah. Just one moment, please. I have a hundred thousand years in training and facilitating, and I never thought I could. I, I never thought I would get to the place where I could actually spend that time on the, all the educating training that I've had. So I'm very, very honored to be here and act as facilitator. I think that it's extremely important because having the facilitator that's focused on the city, it means that uh, there's always somebody in the room that's going to bring it back to point. So feel free to talk all you want about whatever it is we're sharing, but if we're off point, the facilitator will bring you back on point and we'll keep going with staying on, on our focus. So thank you for uh, trusting me as facilitator and I do appreciate that very much. I finally get to use all this training I've had. So let's just keep going with that. Okay, well, go on I want to know if the many lifetimes include, as you were speaking, I was hearing <laughs> Ellen Brown and public banking a lot. <laughs> And so I wonder if you've had any conversation with public banking folks and, you know, I don't know, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, do we just build an alternative city or is there a way that we can work within the existing model to, you know, public banking, something like this, where we can incorporate it into our existing model rather than recreation. Just wondering your thoughts there. If you spoke to any of the public banking people and what you what you came up with there. Thank you for asking that question. And the question, the answer is we don't know. We just started hours ago, according to the clock of the universe. We've only been in the last two minutes. Well, of honey, the conversation. honey, what about the, what about the lifetimes of facilitation work that you've been doing? Have you run across anybody in that? Uh, yeah, I actually have. Um, I've been with uh, several groups that started their own money systems and started their own banking systems and the People's Bank and that that kind of thing. Um, so um, what we're collecting now is just a plethora of knowledge from people. And sooner or later, we're going to have a meeting about that. We're going to have a meeting about exactly what does that mean about the money thing? You know, who's setting that up? And we're going to have a, a discussion sometime about, well, how much time are we talking about? And how much money are we talking about? But for now, we're just all excited and we're just trying to gather the troops so that we can all come together and say, I'm in, I'm a part of the city. Now let's get to work and do our city. <laughs> and we don't have answers yet, but if, if you've got some uh, precious uh, insight or on, connections, just, let us know. Just an add on to my question then, if you have indeed started new money systems, tell us about how that experience and how that's going, please. Okay. Um, well, the, the main um, most successful one that I worked with was the Itha, Ithaca. In Ithaca, New York, um, there's a community that started their own money. And um, they opened up a, a store uh, it was a furniture refurbishing store, and um, it ended up being a store of all kinds of other things, the arts and crafts and the whole thing. And they traded money within their city uh, on their own on their own uh, printed ticket. And um, it actually is still going to this day. Um, and there was another one that got started in Oregon, and um, they... Um, <clears throat> they ran into some blocks because some stores and things wouldn't take their money. Uh, so they just started what they call the gifting circle where nothing cost any money. Everybody just gifted across the circle to each other. And um, I, that might still be going to this day. 
I worked with Charles Eisenstein. Anybody know him from the uh, Sacred Economy? Yeah, he's actually interviewed on my radio station. Um, and I, I worked with him about the idea of a gifting circle. And gifting circles went around the nation for quite a while, and, and they were very popular for a while. But the thing is, folks, they didn't have the city. So things came and went, things were successful for a while and then dropped out. They didn't have a city to look after them and protect them or promote them or, or a, a, a central funnel to put everything in. So there's been several groups that I worked with that have had alternative money or alternative banks. We started the People's Bank in San Francisco. Uh, it, was a co uh, you, it was a credit union People's Bank and um, and uh, that was started during the Occupy movement. And so people just stopped doing banking at wherever they were banking and they went and they, and they uh, got their bank going at the People's Bank. And that's still going to this day, but they're all separate. That's the point. So yeah, that's been some of my experience, although that's only the tip of the iceberg. I've been around for a while and been in this arena. So I probably have some more up my sleeve, but those were things that I could think of Thank you for your questions. All right, Jamin, back to the queue. All right, next in the queue is Michael and no one is after Michael in the queue. So if you wanna get in the queue, either raise your hand or type something in the chat. Michael, great to see you. Michael knows a lot about currency. Uh, he's our in-house uh, cryptocurrency uh, central banker for the city. Mm -hmm. So Michael's in charge, I nominate Michael. Decentralized. Decentralized. De oh, sorry, Decentralized. the decentral, the decentral bank of the city. <laughs> How cool is that? I love it. The decentral yeah. bank. Oh my so God. Michael is the non-chairman, the non-chairperson of the decentral crypto bank of the city. You just got nominated, Michael. I'm just joking. Anyway, Michael, please take it yeah. away. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Jamin. Hey everyone. Hey Dana, great to see you again. I know it's been a long time. Everyone else, Marco, Kate. You know, it's great to be here because just this week, I was beginning to really think about this group and the project that James has been leading a lot in the context of my recent research, um, which has been in this area of decentralized, not, not just decentralized economies, but decentralized, decentralized social systems. Really, it's, it's really much bigger than that. Amanda, have you heard that term before? Like a decentralized bank? Have you heard of that before? No, but I love it. Let's take it on. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely take it. Like, here's the thing. When, I, when I'm coming into a conversation, because like, what Amanda, what you're saying is so familiar to me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I have I have several decades of background in not just inter, deep internet te technology, but also at the intersection of internet technology and ecological sustainability, social sustainability in the Bay Area. Um, and I've lived in many communities too. I've had a lot of experience being in communities and having the conversation around how technology can help reorganize our social behaviors, basically, right? Wow. And- um, Is the People's Bank still there? What's that? Is the People's Bank still there in the Bay Area? I don't know. Um, I'm not sure because like, I, if the, even the term bank is starting to feel antiquated to me. Yeah, right, because, it is now, but back yeah. in the Occupy times, we still use the yeah. word bank. <laughs> yeah, um, but so like this this conversation and your idea is very familiar to me. You, you know, how can we all come together in a new, it seems so simple. Let's just all come together in a new way and, and coordinate differently. Seems so simple. And I've heard this conversation again and again and again and again and again, and again dozens and dozens of times over decades, right? And you know, we get things like Facebook and Web 2.0, which was social media, which has changed the world. And what we're doing right now, this technology of using Zoom to have a meeting in a way we couldn't do before is, is changing our behavior. It's allowing us to coordinate and cooperate in ways we haven't done before. So technology definitely has an influence. But so when I, when I come into a conversation like this recently, I feel like, <clears throat> Um, I know that a lot of people don't know about this, this decentralized technology paradigm that's emerging. And it feels to me, it kind of reminds me of the beginning of the internet. Like it kind of reminds me if I was coming to a conversation and we're, and, and we're talking about, you know, how can we come together to coordinate better? Hey, let's create a website 
Like this is a new thing, like the beginning of the internet. Let, let's, create, let's create this website, but rather than use the technology to create this website, let's use mail. So we're gonna you know, put, put, put our uh, web pages in an envelope and mail it out stamp wise to everyone. And, and like, I'm gonna receive it and we're gonna like circle the buttons on the paper and send them out again. On, you know, it's ridiculous. Is that what we would do 20 years ago? No, we would use the current, we would use WordPress, we would use HTML, we'd use, we'd use email, we'd use all these things that are familiar to us today to go to the next level of social organization by creating a website. If we're gonna create a city, you know, bringing it back to now, if we're gonna create a city today, a, a new society in the cloud, I'm telling you, there are already technologies available. Oh yeah. There are, there, there's a, a huge, huge, like there's a tsunami of activity already happening in this conversation with new technical protocols that are allowing new things to happen that are almost hard to describe. It's like, it's like again, going, going back to the beginning of the internet, like, you know, when, when we first had email, people didn't quite understand it at first. Okay. And so now we're all literate. We all know what email means. We all know what WordPress means. I'm, I'm feeling like there's a, there's a little bit of a lack of literacy around um, the language and the technology and the protocols that will allow this vision you're talking about to, to become activated in a way that it couldn't have done 20 years ago when we we're, because we were talking about this 20 years ago too, right? So um, that's what I'm hearing. When I, when I come to this, let, let me let me do a little screen share and show you some things. These. Yeah. Marco, you want to make uh, Michael co-host? We're such a team, man. Look at us go. There you go. All set, Michael. Thank you, Marco. Let's see, where is my... So, Michael, while you're doing that, I just want to say that um, it's because these entities are already out there is why we can go viral overnight. There's right. things already set in place that would be happy to join us. Yeah. If we promise not to take too much time or, or too much of their money. That's the whole thing. <laughs> so, have you... Can you see my screen? Yeah. Yes. 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 Shmaga. I'm hearing background noise. So, oh, that's Danielle. Um, Wel welcome, Danielle. And and uh, th thank you. Go ahead. Michael. So this is just a Wikipedia page of, of a term called a decentralized autonomous organization. This oh. is a new thing. This is a new type of or like like you know how we have um, uh, LLCs and different kinds of corporations you can legally form. This is a new type of organization, but it's, it's coherency and it's, it's, um, it's congeniency becomes possible based on a networking technology rather than just a centralized legal rule, right? Go check it out. This is, this, this is the type of language we want to start becoming familiar with a decentralized autonomous organization because because in 10 years this will probably be very common language just like email is today right and there are all there are there are already thousands and thousands of these organizations happening and there are also platforms like this like district x that allows you to make these organizations easily district x a network of decentralized markets and communities create, operate, and govern powered by these things, right? Aragon, decentralized autonomous organizations, the next frontier of human coordination. Whoa. Yeah. Because that's what we're talking about here. How do we coordinate together better? And we, you know, one of my favorite, uh, favorite people was Buckmeister Fuller. Oh, my favorite. Right, and he's got some great quotes. You know, one of them is that, um, you know, if you if you and I'm going to paraphrase it, he says something along the lines that if you want to, if you want to get people to think and behave differently, you can't just tell them what to do because that's what we're all doing right now on Facebook. Everyone's just like trying to tell each other how to think differently, and it's not working. 
what Buckmeyer Sapolis says, what you need to do is you need to create a new tool. You need to create a new device, a new technology, a new, a new interface of some sorts. That's how you get people to actually start behaving differently. And that's true. This is one of those tools, right? We can't do it. It's a great idea, but we can't do it with, with stamps and envelopes, right? We have, to, we have to be going forward with the new technology. So Aragon is a platform for creating decentralized autonomous organizations. And like I said, there's already thousands of these things happening. Um, here's another one I just discovered yesterday. It's called ETH OS. It's, a, it's an operating system built on the Ethereum network. I mean, it, when you look at this, it can be a little overwhelming, a little bit technical. But again, I'm just, I'm just inviting people that, you know, when we're having these kinds of conversations, it's going to be useful to start building some technical literacy around these things. Because I'm telling you, this is already where it's going. You know, these, cool. these are like where this. these things are being built. What's that, Dana? I like those illustrations. Right, isn't that cool? cool? Mm -hmm. Well, so it, like, looks like, it looks like a map of ICIC. Back to you, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> um, so th this, this is a community. I, I, I spent about 10 hours researching this, this, this specific one last night. And by the way, I'm doing like, for uh, Jamin, I think Jamin's been tracking some of this with me for the last three months, especially. I've been doing about 10 to 12 hours a day of research into this realm. Because wow. it's just, ma I'm telling you, it's massive. It's huge. It's like an ocean. It's, it's amazing how many people don't know about it. Well, let's get them to know about it. Yeah. We have a city with a university. And so these decentralized autonomous organizations, um, they include, let's see if I can find a good image here. Well, I'm just gonna stop screen. I'm gonna stop screen sharing and come back. Wasn't really prepared to do a full-on presentation, but where did my button go? Hmm. One moment. You should get the where's my butt app. <laughs> Probably being mailed to you, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, check your snail mail in a couple facts. of weeks. We can upgrade to fax. How about that? Fax. Let's bring facts, facts back. Now we're talking. Yeah. Um, I cannot find my Zoom. Oh, there it is. Okay. I've not been using this computer recently. Is that it? Well, I lost. Oh, there's my interface. There it is. Stop share. Okay. I'm back. So these decentralized autonomous organizations. It's a beautiful thing. Again, it's, it's kind of like the beginning of the internet where someone, you know, mostly Tim Berners-Lee, he invented these tech, little technical protocols called IP and uh, TPT, TPCP, TIP and all these things. These little technical protocols allowed for the explosion of the World Wide Web and email and all these things to happen, right? That we've been living in for the last several decades. There are now these new protocols happening at the technical level that are allowing for so much new innovation to happen and it's only just beginning. And so like in a, in a, detail, in a decentralized autonomous organization, like you're saying, um, Ananda, it's, it's like a society or a city or a group that exists on the network itself with no center. It's not centralized. It's not in one building in one city. It's not one bank somewhere. It's not just one boss, not one person running it. It's distributed influence and power across a network, yet the protocol still holds the organization together with functions like anything financial, anything economic. You can create your own tokens and currencies. You can create your own lending and borrowing programs. You can create interest programs. You can uh, create all kinds of financial functions in a decentralized way. You can also have governance functions, voting, proposal systems, like you're saying. People, this is already happening. People are already submitting proposals. Everyone votes on them. They don't even have to come together like this to vote on them. They can just, it's all technical. They can just press the button and say, I vote on this, they vote on that. And it's all verified in a beautiful way. So, um, 
it's a big conversation and a lot of it can be technical. But what I'm saying is just like the beginning of the internet, if we really wanna to pop to this next level, um, we're gonna need people like myself or others who, who can do the technicals and get some of the programming done. But at the same time, um, I really invite everyone to be really begin just, just diving in a little bit, just start getting familiar with some of the language because that'll also help, you know, if, if, we're, really, if we're really building this technically, it's gonna help to understand how some of the technical terms and protocols really start changing the way we think about how we're coming together and collaborating. I don't see them as separate. Wow. Well, I have a lot of input on that one. That was a that was a absolute gold mine. <laughs> Thank you for all the time that you're putting in. You have no idea how powerful and impactful that is to the entire world. Every hour or minute you put in is tenfold the amount of energy that we need right now. I mean, I'm just saying thank you for all that time you put in. Because yeah, it's my passion. It's, I love it. It's, it's fascinating. It's, yeah, it's the end. Try it. And you love Try it. it. Into it. It's gonna start changing. It's gonna it's, it's almost like you're taking a, a mushroom or LSD. It's like it's like it'll start bending your brain. You go, oh my God, I'd never thought about money in this way before. It starts changing what you think money was and what it mm. can be and what economics were and what what human collaboration was it starts melding it all together in this one thing it's like yeah well it's, i have a couple I, honestly, thoughts speaking, on this you know honestly speaking like I, you know i've been involved with the internet for for 20 years i was programming computers when i was 12 years old in 1982. Wow. i've always been kind of on the edge of things a bit kind of like you know on the frontier but yeah there is nothing more exciting happening in the world today I'm pretty sure, or at least this is one of them. Maybe there's a handful of really promising things happening. This is one of them. Yeah, really you know, I was I was thinking as you were speaking, uh, Michael, what would it look like? And I want all of us here that are listening to just uh, kind of work with me, almost kind of like it's a like it's a guided meditation. You know, where you have a guided meditation, everybody just kind of drops in kind of to the same thought of the person doing the guiding. Uh, well, this isn't a guided meditation, but I'd like everybody here to drop in with me on this thought that what would it look like if we seriously put the developers and designers and the, and the, and the techs together that are doing all of this work, what if we put them in the same room at the same time and cut them loose on this idea of an intentional city? That's what needs to happen. Right. We need to put right. everybody together in the same room. Right. And I agree. And we've here. Here's the here's my honest, realistic take on this because I've also heard this before many times. Like to to bootstrap a project and get it to build momentum mm -hmm. is a tricky thing, right? I think mean, there's a lot of elements that have that happen. One of those elements is incentives, right? Because as you were speaking earlier, you know, everyone, most people, you know, they, everyone has their own lives. They have their, what they, they have their sense of what is a priority for them. They have their, their time is valuable. Their resources are valuable. People got to pay bills, all this complicated stuff that life can bring. And so incentives, you know, this gets to the basic psychology, you know, Pavlov and stuff like this, you know, people behave based on incentives. It's a psychological fact. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what's driving our economy. You know, the, the current economy, even though it's, it's a sick economy, that's why we're getting sick behavior. But an economy can be designed to be different, where you still have incentive programs to, to motivate people to take actions and behave in different ways. In my perspective, that's what comes first. You have to have some kind of an incentive program. If people are, you know, you know, mo I'm not saying everyone's this way. Some people really are altru altruistic, but it's relatively few. And um, most of the population, we operate like animals. We have an animal mind and we, we respond to very fundamental incentive systems. So um, I, I accept that as a fact about where we're at. In human what do you think a good incentive would be to get people to funnel together in our city? Well, I think that... Um, in my perspective, the idea of what motivates people may begin to change over time. Like that we've, we've been in this paradigm for a long time where, where it's just 
money, USD, in fact. USD is the primary thing that everyone's trying to grab at. And since that's become the thing that we projected all the value onto, it tends to want to stay that way, mm -hmm. right? It has a self-reinforcing loop. So we're kind of stuck in the USD economic paradigm. And then that's, since it's a sick system, we're getting some sick behaviors, right? Um, I think that will begin to shift over time, but it may take decades or centuries for that to really shift where people are valuing art or silence or, you know, intimacy. These are other values we all have, but to shift those to the center of all of humanity, you know, may not all happen overnight, right? <clears throat> people, we, we do value to come together like this. People love, we're, we're a social species coming together like this to have conversations and have a sense of community and bonding is certainly a fundamental value being human. Yet, yet still, you know, if my rent is late, my landlord won't care about that, will she? My phone company, my internet company won't care that I'm bonding. They want to know where the USD is at. Right? It's just the reality of it. So, so we're, I think we're in this long-term shift of maybe breaking away from that old system. That's not going to happen overnight. So I, I still feel like we can begin leaning into placing some value on these other things and, and incentivize people that way. But the reality is we're still very much in the early stages of that. And people, they, they do, they want to be compensated for their time. They, they want to be able to, you know, buy a new iPad or take that trip to Hawaii, buy their girlfriend a ring, whatever, you know, because th these things all intersect, you know, to buy your girlfriend a ring is, 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 a, is a tribute to, to the value of bonding, but yet it takes USD to get that ring. So it's like, it's complicated like that. So I, I my view is that you do need to start with real, you know, economic standards that are pretty similar to what we've already been operating on and just start tweaking them a little bit, you know, trim tabbing, like, like Buckmaster Fuller said, you can start just making little adjustments. So my view is that these systems are already in place where you can, you can create entire economies, you can create your own currency, you can create your own tokens. And so when, you know, for example, you know, if we were to enact this city in the clouds, you know, I think there's certain components that kind of need to be in place first to really attract people to where they can really root into it, you know, not just like, oh, okay, we're just having a conversation here about city, but there's nothing they can root into. Whereas if they come in and they go, oh, just by being here and contributing, like say my 30 minutes a week or whatever, I get one of these tokens. I get this, this that just shows that I now own that little token. It just shows that I now, I'm, I'm now making a metric. I'm now accounting. There's an accountability system in place that's actually showing what people are contributing. That's the way I think of economics. Like, you know, uh, economics has kind of a bad taste in people's mouths. And I, I've really worked through that a lot in the last many decades. I see economics as the conversation of how you create a collective intelligence of the human species. That's what it is. That is what it is. Economics is that. Money also is this dirty word that we tend to like, we love money, but we hate it. We want to, you're like, what do you do with it? You have to have it, but you don't, like, it's because of that, that money system was designed poorly to, to be some manipulative control over humanity. But economics is a larger conversation around how you get, you know, it's, it's all the parameters, it's all the, it's all the details around how you get a collective of human beings to coordinate together and do something. That's what economics is. Yeah. And so I see if, if we if our goal is to see some new higher order of collective intelligence emerging in our collective, we've got to be having the economic conversation and also changing the economic systems. And that's what this is. I'm showing you. This is it. There's nothing else on the planet yeah. happening. This so here's the here's the thing. So, so just to wrap Go up, ahead. it's like yeah, I think we we need to stop. But you need to start by creating some semblance of an economy and an accounting system. You don't have to call it money. You can call it something else. But it's it's an accountability system. It's a metric of measuring our collaboration and our interactions with each other. That's where it begins. Without that, the system will dissipate energy. It's physics, literally. So I always physics. come from how I can, not how I can't, or how yeah. we can, not how we can't. 
I've just and, seen it happen so many times. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, of course. So here's what here's what how I see this actually materializing. We have the ability to set up a conference. Um, now <laughs> we're on a conference right now. <laughs> and thanks to Jamin and whatever he did to organize this process and and uh, Marco, who's always there for us to answer the call whenever we come in. Thank you, Marco. I always love you so much. Here's the thing. The how we can, not how we can't. I propose that we start a conference with several, you know, uh, with several uh, segments in it. And we'll kind of decide, you know, what those segments are in detail later, but for the big picture right now, let's put together a conference. Now, when I go to a conference, I've been on all kinds of conferences. I've been, you know, I've been in the technical field. I've been in the, you know, training field. I've been in a, you know, I've been into uh, trade exhibitions and whatever. But uh, the thing is, when I go there, I always get a lot of education. And they usually have these forums or they have classrooms, they have breakouts or they have a, a, a series of speakers on different things. And you can go there and you can learn a lot. And it's great. But you walk away and you're tired and you walk away feeling disconnected because there's really nothing that you can do about any of those things. You might pick up a, a business card, network with somebody that you, you know, connected with at the conference. But the point is, uh, we've been talked at and shown and videoed at and and talked to for way too long. And now the people want to connect like this and they want to use their voice and they want to express themselves and, and they want to see who they're talking to. And, um, you know, I want to have a bad hair day in front of the camera. You know, I mean, it's all good. So here's the can do. I believe that we can start a conference and we can decide to have various different topics together and, and purposely invite people to do with that topic. I would like to see a room like this full of these designers that are doing the technical things, designing these, these programs. I want them all together on the same screen We're understanding that the reason they're invited is that they're invited into our city and cut them loose. Let them see what they can learn from each other, and then they they'll have a they'll have a directive. They get to have the invitation to come and and join our city, but they need to have but they need to come away with a uh, uh, a plan uh, where we can where we can grow grow our city, and it all comes you know through one funnel, and and you know. Uh, put them all in the same room. All the techies, put them all in the same room. Let's just see what we're made of. And then the next room, the next time, the next conference call we have will be on a different topic and it'll be called education or outreach or whatever you want to call it. And you were talking about how we need to start changing our language. We need to start understanding technical terms. To me, that's like that's like technical terms 101. We'll have a class from our university at the city on technology 101. So people can understand maybe some history of where we've come from in, in technology, some things that have been done, some words that I might know, some we might actually do an experiential exercise in that class and go out on a few web pages, just like what you did real briefly right there. But let's spend some time with it. Let's have people understand what's really out there so that they can make intelligent choices about what they want um, to be involved with or, 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 or what questions they would even ask a techie. Right? This now they don't even know the name decentralized economy. Um, you know, so. That would be another part of our conference is to have um, specific education 101 classes aimed at, you know, the rest of the story, the rest of the people, um, not necessarily the techies, not even maybe necessarily um, 
the people in this arena because we're all speaking the same language here. But what about the people that just live next door and have no idea and they think that Fox is true? What 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 was with those guys? You know, um, so if we had a education 101 course about several different topics, one of them being technology, one of them being currency. You know, I mean, people just need to be informed. There's so much going on. Why aren't we taking it upon ourselves to offer our university classes to inform people? We might even do one segment on guess what's available out there. And we might spend some time just uh, the other day, we had Glow on the, on, the, on the call and she just like blasted out six or seven different web pages of things of organizations that are going on now. I had no idea. And I was so thrilled to find all that out. So maybe one of the, you know, information 101 classes is all about what change making organizations are out there, who, you know, what did they need as far as time or money? Um, you know, how, how can you get involved with them? And so I'm thinking of an organization like any of the ones that you just showed us real briefly there. Yeah. What if, here's another what if, what if they could, they could be a part of our conference and what they came away with, with hundreds of more people that would support them in their work, either with time or money or resources. But right now, if I decided, you know what, I should probably wake up and be a part of this, this new paradigm, but I have no idea what's out there. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to start. And we have a conference on this. These are the things that are active right now. You can join and this, this group needs, you know, more members. This group needs, you know, more funds. This group needs more technology or whatever. So we'll have an education. Um, uh, there's a word I'm looking for. Yeah. Um, uh, um, I'm missing it, but it's, it's where you put, like colleges come together and they put together these forums and things like that. So then here's another topic for Dana and all of the beautiful souls we have that are representing some kind of a spiritual level, some kind of a heartfelt level, a wellness level. How many people do we know who are in wellness auditoriums right now? You know, let's have a part of our conference, a day of our conference, or however much time we agree on, be a part of, this is what people are out there doing for wellness and for health and for energy and for spirituality or whatever. And so when you come to this conference, you can go down the menu, just like you would any conference, and you decide which breakout sections or which speakers or which forums you're going to listen to, and we will be prepared with all the people lined up to offer the people what they need for that topic. Only it's all virtual. I've organized the whole entire conference like this on my own, well, with a committee, and it, it was hell. You know, putting together all those speakers and the entertainment and the, you know, then there's the little uh, sections in between where you, you know, play music or whatever, you had to organize all that. It's, it's, it was a lot of work. I'm not talking about a lot of work. I'm talking about let's put together, and it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be um, a big deal at first. We could start off with a conference next week on on um, on technology, future technology for twenty for twenty twenty one and beyond, or something. You invite your speakers. You put all the all the guys doing. I know that there's someone behind this. You know these these. Uh, these tech forums you're talking about, Michael, there's somebody sitting at a desk doing all that. Who is that? <laughs> I want all the Michaels in the room. They're you know? they're all programming. They're they're all they're all constantly in the conversation of what I just presented. Then let's it's bring them here. here. Bring them all well, here together. Let them connect with each other. And then let them, them offer something. Here, like what what will tend to happen is like they're almost wanting you to go there too. It's like, you know, so that's why I'm saying the, the language is really the interface, you know, um, it's, it's um, you know, birds of a feather flock together. And um, <clears throat> I, I'm also, you know, I have, a, I have a master's degree in philosophy, cosmology and consciousness. I'm considering myself a spiritual person too. You know, I can have those conversations also. I look at where these, these, these two things are coming together. Actually, you know, Buckmeister Fuller, Buckmeister Fuller also talked about the ephemeralization of society, that over time, over the evolution of, of culture, 
things are becoming increasingly ephemeralized, meaning less physical, right? And it's almost like the spiritual conversation, you know, that there's this intangible unseen world. That's kind of what's happening here too. Even though you wouldn't think about these technical conversations being spiritual, it is the ephemeralization of society. Yeah. And so Let's put them all in the like, same room. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that's what I'm saying. Like, um, <clears throat> you know, I'm here. Uh, yeah. But let's it, make 10 it, more of you and let's have a conference. Yeah. Like we got to find those people. And it's we not hard track, to find. Track them. Well, they're not hard to find. They're everywhere. But also they, 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 they're usually busy creating things. Right. Okay. So what would be the incentive for them to come to our city and, and give us 30 exactly. minutes of their time? That's why I'm saying that the, what is the incentive? Well, let's, incentive let's incentive. figure that out and invite them. Well, so what, you know, what, what I would offer for myself, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll give my dollar a month, maybe a little more, maybe more than a dollar and 30 minutes a week. I would like, so right now I'm, I've been training myself in, the deeper technicals of actually how to create a decentralized autonomous organization. Wow. I'm, I'm, it's, it's, it's not easy. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's a very technical thing and there's a lot of complexity to it. I've, I've been training for years, but it's, the ecosystem keeps changing. So you like what, which platform is the best one, all this kind of thing. So I, I'm doing that right now, but I think, I think we are in a stage where, um, you know, I'm already running some experiments and I think um, we're, um, you know, I, I would offer helping to do that, like helping to create at least a, a kickstart of of the semblance of at least the, the the deepest layer of what I see a city in the clouds being would be, you know, an incentive system. So, you know, it, some, some, at least some light framework of an accounting system. I think that's, in my opinion, that's the first thing to do. Or, you know, we're, this is the first thing to do, actually, is have this is the first thing to do. Let's but let's all say that all together to on on yeah. count of three. Let's all say together. This is the first thing to do. One, yeah. two, three. This is this the, first, is the thing first thing to do. To do. This is the first thing to do. We have to form the city. So, um, yeah. Michael, who's your heroes in the technical field? In the um, who would you love field? to just spend some time with in the technical arena? I'm sorry. Say that again. Who would you love to spend time with? Who's your hero? Who who do you look up to? Dan, who would Dan you just... Larimer, Brock Pierce. Okay, there you go. You gotta come, you know, they're, they're pretty inaccessible. Well, they're not if they're a part of a city. The, the thing is, they're already part of it. They're already part. You know, they're, what I'm saying is they're, but they're already- But they're a part, city. What's that? They're a part, a part. Well, yeah. I they're mean, not unified together. <clears throat> in a world city. I mean, here's a, like, you know, my perspective on that, you know, I, I hear, we, that's what we want. We want unification. I, I think more than unification, we want coherency. And this is why I love what Dana is focusing on. More than unification, we want coherency because in my research in the evolution of consciousness and the universe and cosmology, it's actually natural to have both unification nodes and things that are apparently separate because that's where we get diversity we want a, we want a universe in reality with diversity and to have diversity you don't have full unification all the time so it's just it's this wild mix like yin and yang of a reality that's both a mix of centralizing nodes where things come together and they fully unify and also then they are apparently separate although we know from quantum physics that they aren't right everything's actually fully connected yeah. already so what i'm saying in in a really realistic sense we're gonna have many cities in the clouds and they, well, yeah. they will be unified by what's called interoperability. Mm -hmm. That they can, they can have their own coherent, you know, bubbles of nebulous congruency as, as independent communities that all kind of like gravitate around their common values that are, you know, different than other ones, but they can still interoperate. They can say, well, we, we, still, we still do yeah. trade. We still, we still communicate this way. So I, that's the way I look at it, you know, that, and so like when people like these other heroes out there, they're already building their own cities. Well, and have so, them join the city. <laughs> See, this is the, uh, the simple explanation I gave in the very beginning, really simple. There's mm -hmm. the, the, there's the city in the clouds, which is the umbrella for everything. And then there's the and. 
and they've all got their and they're all doing their and but they're doing them separately what's wrong with us why aren't we uniting ourselves why aren't we collaborating why aren't we you know um connecting we we just keep creating more and more and more technology and more and more separation and and what i'd like to see is i'd like to i would like to uh right here on the phone we have um we have several people here who are very, very capable who have networks. I would like us to come to a uh, an agreement about how long we all need, whatever that is, an example. Let's say we need a, a couple weeks or something. Go out into your network and see how many you can get to come together on an agreed time on a call at a conference. And let's just see how many networks we can put together on for topics for people to come and and be a part of the conference we've got technology we've got you know, healing and 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 wellness and health and i have the whole resource-based economy arena you know uh jamin's got another whole arena around uh food and and vegan and i you know what all and i don't know uh danielle and and claire and marco and 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 kate we've all got we've all got a network we're all doing our and in some network. I challenge us to come back together with, uh, you know, two or three speakers from that arena, not 20, not 100, you know, maybe five max, five max speakers, uh, five max um, showcasers to come together and, and we'll put them all in the same room and we'll invite an audience to come and watch them just kind of unfold together and unify and, and collaborate. You know, I, I would seriously love to be in the same room with five different techie guys who are all doing, you know, stuff like what you explain. And I, I would love to hear them. I'd love to not only hear what they are doing, but I would love to see them, you know, connect with all the other guys or people in the in the arena. And then I would like to see what they come up with. What's well, a unified you know, system that we could all use that we yeah. use each of this so part he, or that part or whatever? I think it's great. I think it's great that we can begin to make these bridges. Um, you know, those people are already out there having conversations like this that you can join. Yep. And they there, can. There's lots, like hundreds of them happening. Yeah. So let's so, put them together in the same room <clears throat> or in, well, the, in the same city. So there's either we can try to bring them here. Or we can go there, and then we're in the and same room. and both and you see this is the sure thing. sure I'm just saying that yeah I yeah good well anyway that's the, what I got out of what you're talking about is there's already masses of things going on let's yeah. adopt them let's let's funnel them into the city and let's educate the people so that they know what we're talking about those are two uh, two things that I saw that can come from that now see one of the things that I know as a facilitator is that every single meeting that uh that i'm in um i i facilitate it to the point where we all come away doing something some kind of action step next otherwise it ends up just being a wonderful brainstorm and lots of energy and nobody going anywhere so uh i'm going to request all of us agree and we don't know what the agreement is yet we've got lots of people to still talk to but uh, we're going to come away with an agreement to take an action step so that we can take it to the next level. I propose the next action step be that we all go out into our networks and bring back five speakers in that category so that we can create a talk and an audience for that group and they can begin to, to meld together and, 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 and collaborate. That's my proposal. Anyway. We will come away with an action step and some agreements, and uh, that's how that's how I roll. That's how I facilitate things because the reason we've gotten so far in just a few days is because we practice that model of listening to everybody, passing the feather, um, ch chiming in, and then coming back with action steps of what's next. Okay, thank you so much, Michael. Michael, Michael, you are uh, amazing. I just want more of you. All those guys that are your heroes, I want them all working together. Everybody does. Imagine how what the benefits would be if all of these techie guys all doing their thing said, wait, wait. How about we create something, one thing, 
one universal thing that everybody uses. And keep your and. Please keep your and. Don't be thinking you've got to give up anything to come here. It's just a tiny bit of time and a tiny bit of money, but a whole bunch of incentive about collaborating together. We get rewards out of building our city. It's something we've all been craving for hundreds of years. It's called connection. We all want that. And that's the payback. That's the, that's the offering. That's the token you get. You get to join a city. Finally, a unified city of everyone coming together. And each person may have to compromise a little bit to be there. But that's what we're about. All right. Michael, are you complete? Never. Never. Oh, I love you. <laughs> are you complete for now? Yeah, actually, I have another meeting I need to prepare for. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, put, it, it, this conversation is never complete, I think. I know but, it isn't, but, but for now. it will come to an action and we will take action steps. Would you please leave your email information, your contact information in the chat room? Yeah. Thank you very much. I love what you said. Um, maybe you won't be with us when we come to the conclusion of what our action step is, but we'll be uh, we'll be in touch with you. And uh, I would love to see you get together some of these high tech techie guys and put them all on the same screen, man. Talk about burning, burning uh, the pathway. Woof. No more talking. We're getting it done. All right. So, Timon, back to you. Do you have something to say or do you have someone in the queue? Both. So in the queue, we've got Jamin, followed by Marco, followed by Sir Roland. And Dana, did I see you raise your hand for the queue? Okay. And uh, welcome, Jordan, who's in Hungary. And uh, we're actually spanning the whole world right now. I think the sun is never setting on the conversation at this point. So Jamin is next in the queue. So here's what I want to say. I've, I've been hearing about the, the listening to this, this idea of the conference and all that. And hey, Michael, bring all your people. And um, I'm wondering how, you know, how we might do a, a form of decentralized conference. And so imagine that within the intentional city in the clouds, ICIC, and all the cool stuff we're building around it, that instead of a downtown where you have all these businesses and skyscrapers and all that, instead of a downtown, what if we had a Dow town? Yes, a center of town where there's a bunch of decentralized autonomous autonomous organizations, a Dow town. And then within that Dow town, there's a very prominent decentral D bank, which is all about debunking banking, right? And so by creating this fun thing so it's kind of like hey what's going on here well there's all kind of, it's like it's like downtown manhattan there's all kinds of stuff going on you know there's no one place where you go where someone gives you directions this is where you need to go right we're having one conference no it's a decentralized there's talks going on all over the place and so it's really i really think the time has come for this intentional city in the clouds and for those of you just joining that's kind of the main thread here we're, we're co-creating and not an intentional community, but an intentional city with all kinds of communities and neighborhoods and districts and amusement parks and universities and public goods and services and all kinds of great stuff all happening within the city. And we're basically inviting in all these wonderful folks to help us co-create it. Um, and the central themes or the decentral themes of the intentional city are include uh, saving, healing, and transforming life on earth, and perhaps even more broadly, change making. This is the place where we make change happen. And we were talking earlier, as Claire mentioned, that you first do this in sort of in the Akashic before doing it on, in, in the real world. So this, this intentional city in the clouds is like an Akashic city. Dana was mentioning, you know, the parallels with Lemuria. This could be a Lemuria in the clouds, right? Anyway, the, the metaphors and analogies abound. Um, but I think the, the crucial thing at this point is that there be openness, we open it up, and we have this decentralized conference, right, deconf, it could be deconf, the decentralized conference, um, you know, with myriad different rooms and et cetera going on. And, 
you know, people talk about, you know, an intentional city in the clouds. Well, at what layer? Is it the ionosphere, the troposphere, the whatever sphere? No, it's in the zoomosphere. We're first doing it at the in the realm of conversation, face-to-face -face conversation. What else? That's that's really one thing that really characterizes this intentional city in the clouds. And with that, I'm going to practice concision and passing the stick. And by the way, here's here's for, for those of you who are unfamiliar, this is how the current flow is going, and we can always change it. But Ananda is the leader, right, of this conversation. So she invokes me when it's time to invoke the cue. And um, Ananda can always trump the cue. And in fact, she kind of helps bring us back to center. So whenever anyone finishes speaking, like myself, it by default goes back to Ananda. Ananda, you can always say carry on and I'll continue working the queue. I'm managing the queue and Ananda manages me. So with that, I'm complete going on mute. Ananda, either pass it back to me or say something going on mute. Thank you. I just uh, love it when we put ourselves together and we, you know, connect. We just keep getting better and better and better. I keep We keep surprising ourselves with more and more ideas about what to do with our city. And I don't think it's gonna be any problem whatsoever to get people to come to our city and, and, and incentivize people by, yeah, having lots of activities going on. However, we don't wanna get, we don't want to represent the separateness that we're already experiencing. So we wanna be organized. We, we want lots of people to have lots of choices, but we don't wanna just invite people on you know, here and there and whatever, and, 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 you know, just kind of happen to come into the right conversation. We want to invite them into a conversation by Dana and all of the beautiful things she has to say and her network of people. And so you can see a schedule, you know, just like, uh, you know, you walk around in, in Manhattan, like you said, you'll know when different theaters are playing where you'll know when uh, there's a parade, you'll know when there's, you know, things going on. So we, we wanna be the, um, we wanna be the source for organizing it enough to create the incentive for people like the Michaels to come, people in Dana's arena and Jordan's arena, you know, and, you know, Kate's arena. And um, so, the main incentive that we are offering is no more separation. All righty. Go back to the queue, Jamin. Go right ahead. Yeah, I, I All right. When I see someone that. waving like Michael, I'm, I let them jump in, which is a kind of jumping the queue, but, but the, with the agreement that it's concise. So go ahead, uh, Michael. It's concise. I, I, I need to jump off. I have another meeting to prepare for. Um, I just wanted to say, just again, um, you know, uh, if we want more people like me that have that language in this conversation, I would suggest that we begin practicing that language already by decentralizing and going out to those groups. I mean, those, 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 those conversations are already happening. And if we go out there first, <laughs> And then maybe they'll come back, but it's um, and then by doing by going out, then we also learn their language, and it's language that will benefit us. And then how do we get that list? Well, I showed you some of them, and I'm telling you, it's it's a universe. It's huge. So I, it's like you know, just start digging into it. Get on well, give us some direction. And see, this get, is what I'm talking on, about. Get on what if we were the, the normal average public person? We wouldn't know what you're talking about. Well, we have, I'm not talking about them. Yeah. yeah I, like, well, let me tell you, like, I've, I've, I've been, um, a lot of this started with Bitcoin. Okay. So, like, Bitcoin's a whole conversation, but like, I, I first got into Bitcoin about seven or eight years ago. And once I understood what it was and what it was introducing to, to explode into this huge decentralizing social system that's that's emerging now. Once I understood that, I started sharing with my friends, but no one understood and no one listened to me. It was it was actually really rare. I would say maybe about like one in twenty people would actually listen and do something about it and go do their own research. Jamin was one of them, right? Jamin listened. How happy are you about listening now, Jamin? 
Very, very happy. Very happy. Most people don't listen to me. I tell, go look into, go research Bitcoin, go research decentralized autonomous organizations. It's going to take some time. It won't make sense at first. It's like, pretend you're going to college and it's going to take a couple of years to understand. Start learning it and start getting the conversation. Um, and it'll benefit not only what you're talking about, being able to build these bridges with other people who already know it, it'll also benefit yourself and everyone because this is what's coming. This is the one of the best things I think we have coming is this decentralizing paradigm coming along. So again, just get on Google, get on YouTube. YouTube is great for you. You can watch YouTube videos all day long on this stuff. Can you give us some of those verbiages that you use just in the chat so we can have a place to start? You know, start with Bitcoin. Well, start I mean, with could you write them in the chat so that yeah, we can refer yeah. to them? Because you know what, frankly, as facilitator, I, I, I'm watching. Well, I, I put some links above to the um, Did you? To the decentralized organization stuff. Like that's, I think that's, you know, it's good to come from with Bitcoin, but you, you can easily get distracted because there's so much yeah. weird news around it. It's not really the center of what's happening. It's it's what started this, yeah. but it's not necessarily the center of it. Um, but really just begin understanding what decentralization means and the if technology. If you could just give us some direction on that, I'd appreciate that. It's in the chat. The, the links. It's in the chat. Okay. Yeah, it's in the chat. See, this um, is one of those action steps. Like, we don't want to just talk. We want to leave with information. Yeah, so, so that's information. Um, that's what I would say are great action steps is, and again, I'm just, most people don't listen. Well, and so let's, I just, like, let's you know, create and, and the that's, arena that's, so they want to listen. What's let's that? Let's do that. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate yeah. it so much. You're welcome. And thanks for putting in the, the uh, you know, just the starting point. Okay, I'm going to look into this stuff. Okay, thanks yeah. for the starting point. I feel like I've you been did. I've been directed and educated now. I feel much better. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much for your vision and your participation. And um, I got to jump off now. Okay, we'll I'll miss you. you see you again. Great to see you, time. Michael. Thanks so much for being here. We'll see you soon. Okay, then. Becky, Jamin, and do we have an next queue? Yes, we do. We've got uh, Marco in the queue, followed by Sir Roland. And if okay. you would like to be in the queue, just either raise your hand or type in the chat, put me in the queue or throw something at me or whatever. Anyway, uh, Aunt Claire is in the queue. Great. Oh boy. Um, all right, so we got Marco followed by Sir Roland, followed by Claire. Marco, take it away. I'm gonna be real quick um, because my main question was for Michael. <laughs> so we'll, we'll save that for another time. I just wanna say, uh, you know, I'm glad I'm here today and I think we're making good progress again. We just got to keep at it and leave with our action steps. Uh, that'll have me complete for right now. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, Marco. All right. Um, and of course, Ananda, just jump in whenever you need. Um, otherwise, I'm going to keep working the queue. We've got Go Sir Roland. Thank you for your patience. Sir Roland, followed by Claire. Take it away, Sir Roland. And you're, you're on mute, Sir Roland. You're muted. OK, this is fantastic. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm going to rattle the cage. Uh-oh. Ananda. Where does Ananda come from? The name? Oh, Ananda. How did the you person? get the name Ananda? Oh, well, it means bliss and joy. I know and, that. Um, I was blessed with the name because uh, the people that I was in training with, um, they they said they gave me the name as a gift and said, "You have to have this name because you live in bliss and joy, and we're giving you this name." And so I've been a Nanda for thirty years, and it's my Wonderful. author name as well. <laughs> I am a direct disciple of Shivananda. Oh, I love it. And Yogananda. Yogananda, all my buddies. And, and Sachinananda. And Mark and, and Shivananda. Oh, okay. Wonderful. Thank the, you. the the Sivananda organization is the largest online organization in the world. Mm -hmm. I was the forty seventh person certified in the world to teach yoga. Whoa. Now the Shivananda organization certifies. 10,000 a month. Hmm. Then there's Iyengar. So there's 
So that's just who I am. Number two, Ananda, you said no more separation. What I see is vast separation. Mm -hmm. Let me explain. I see a disconnect between Ben Bowler, between John and Summer and Elizabeth, and I know it's elsewhere <clears throat> because I am. I was there when open space was invented with Harrison Owen. I had a 10 year relationship with him before he discovered open space. And, wow. uh, and this is what I know about open space. Open space ultimately leads to separation, separation, separation. Okay. Now, I'm a resource for you. I don't have much time, but my whole system transformation process comes from over 15,000 experiences oh. following Kathy Dana Miller, who had 500. Okay, she's the most powerful woman I've ever met in the world of change making. She's passed away, of course, but I was with her very closely. Okay, now, so my challenge to you all is you need to get unified. You know, the Pope says, the Pope is one of my clients. Okay, the Pope Francis. And he just wrote his encyclical when he got there. Solidarity and reduce the economic model of the United States. No more rich getting richer. Everybody gets money. And so I'm going to go. Uh, I, I'm just throwing my two cents in there. I have Jamin as a genius, okay? I have Dana as my flower child. I, I, I just got a new computer and a new iPhone, and I'm still figuring out how, to, how, how it all works. Uh, uh, so I haven't got my, I uh, can't put my uh, picture up here with my flower and my hair, okay? But, um, uh, what can I say? Uh, um, David Cooper Ryder. Well, I got the real flowers, Dana. Um, uh, I just can't show them to you. Um, uh, so David Cooper Ryder, who I saw in the... Uh, video by Ben opening up world unity says words matter. I am one of the only direct disciples. He's only, he's my only living guru right now, David Cooper. Writer. He and I go back a long ways. And so words matter. And so what he says is, we first discover what's best, what's great, what's going well. And then we say, what can go better? And I think that's a conversation that you could start with right here sometime, Damon Lead or whatever. Um, and so uh, let me share with you what I'm doing. I'm transforming India, the whole country, China. Whoa, that's a wild one. They're four years ahead of us mm. in technology. 
Yeah. You know, my my Lou Lou Lee Lou guy, he makes over a million dollars a year from who 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 now I brought him into Thailand University, Assumption University. He runs that now. We're doing World Three uh, Transformation Conference coming up virtually. And then I'm transforming the Philippines, where my wife is from. And yes, I'm transforming the entire country of Africa. And Elizabeth is very much connected with me there. And uh, so that's why I don't have a lot of time here. I just, you know, followed the wonderful transformation that's going on in the United States right now with Biden. And I, I got lonely. <laughs> I, I had to see what Jamin was up to because he sent me an email. And uh, so that's my two cents. I'm probably going to go. You know, I've been, I'm just coming off uh, seven days of silence and meditation um, under the guidance of the Jesuits because I, I'm a Jesuit guy. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the first person of the Jesuit world to have a degree in change. And this is the issue of the world today, change. Okay, uh, let me ramble one more time. And so I just went to mass. I go to mass every day, virtually. Okay, in Toronto, the Cardinal was did the mass today and he talked he used the word encounter seven to ten times i studied with dr gerard egan from Loyola university whose thesis was called encounter and became a very famous book and in that time was matt fox he was, I, was, I, entered, I was introduced to Matt Fox a week after he was ordained as a priest. And of course, then the Catholic Church excommunicated him. So um, that's just kind of who I am and where I am and what's going on. And, and I'm kind of, kind of stopped now. I, I overdid my thing. And, uh, and Jamin, uh, go, go, go. And, and who, did he, who said what? I don't know who it was. I just heard it in, in, the, in the last week. Um, you won't know until you go. <laughs> God love how, as they say in China, uh, uh, Confucius, how? Hare Krishna. Wahai Guru. And Jesus Christ. Amen. Alleluia. 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 As my dad's name is Lou. <laughs> Cheerio, as they say. Oh, I'm 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 also transforming England, the United United Kingdom with with with, with uh, Joff North. We've we've had a 40-year relationship. Okay. Thank Cheerio. you. Thank you, Roland. We appreciate you so much. How about you get all your little friends together to come together with our city? Well, the, the way I, you, that's a good question. No, you got to connect to me. I'm on my website. That's the only place I have my, you, you Google change, change Roland blog. No, Rollins Solomon blog. And that's the only place I interact with people because of my time. And Can I've you put got that in our chat room, please. I, I don't know how to get to the chat room oh, to write. Okay. Can you uh, do everyone. That, I, 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 can, I, I can, whoever comes up to the chat room, I'll send it to them. And then they got to send it to everybody else. I could connect with uh, Marco. Um, and, uh, and so I have two videos there that are awesome i have matt fox's 
latest video from the Shiva Ananda Ananda organization in the Bahamas where I spent 100 hours in that meditation room. And he's just recent. He is, what does he say? We have got, and this is you people are missing this, missing it totally. He says, we've got eight to 10 months to turn this around worldwide. And you can't be doing the stuff you're doing. You gotta get to climate change. You gotta get to reducing the disease, okay? And then, and then I have a woman called D E L I O. She is into consciousness. She is she is so up to date on what's going on in the mystical world because she is a mystic. She is absolutely incredible, and again, she will knock your socks off. And she will, she will make you understand that you got eight to 10 months left. And that's it. And then the human race will disappear. Okay? Guy Gunderson says that's already happening. It's, it's too late. But I'm optimistic like Jamin. Until the fat lady sings, it's not over, as Yogi Berra would say. Cheerio, God bless. What was the name of the lady uh, you mentioned? It, 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 it's it's D-E-L-I-O. Uh, you know, I don't know how, to, how you get a hold of her. Well, you get a hold of her at my, my, my website. Okay. She's, she's all over. She's all over YouTube. Okay. Her... her, her her evolution, you know, she's an ex nun who, 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 who uh, is not a Catholic nun. She is a uh, uh, a nun who sees all dogmas equal. Oh, beautiful. Okay. Wow, we have some more homework to do, gang. So thank oh, you yeah, for that, Roland. Yeah. Ananda, you what? We bless yeah. you and love you and thank you so much for oh, coming yeah, on. Go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta, I gotta go meditate now. <laughs> you're all, you're all, always welcome here. Thank you. Oh, of course. I know that uh, Jamin knows that. Uh, I just come in and interfere. <laughs> oh, you're well, no yeah, Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, see you. Bye. <laughs> we are so rich in people here. It's amazing. All right, Jamin, let's go on to the next... Um, but the thought I had was by some, you know, mysterious, you know, magical energy. We're attracting these people with millions in their network. Just saying. <laughs> this is going to take no time at all for people to come to our city and join us if they get an incentive. And I say the incentive is no more separation. There are no tokens, there's no money, there's no anything else other than we get to be unified and see what we're made of. All right, Jamin, continue, please. Thank you, Ananda. Waiting patiently is Claire, followed by Jamin. And after that, no one else is in the queue. And I wanna welcome back Alice, welcome Alice. And uh, we are recording and having an amazing conversation here. Claire, please take it away. So at the very beginning, I was wondering about connecting with Ubiquity University and the Humanity Rising people. Mm. They have a lot that is similar to what we're talking about, I feel. They've got a lot of organized stuff that's going on and they're brilliant, brilliant presenters. Um, and then I think that's how I met Jamin on an after chat kind of thing. I'm not sure. Anyway, I, I have a lot of interests. I don't know which one to even bring up, except that the most urgent is ecology and the climate and the planet. 
um, in 2004, I wrote a verse narrative called The Call of Mother Earth, How a Being of Light Draws Forth Humanity's Response. Ooh. And then in two years ago, I met Colombian healers who are dedicated to Mother Earth. And more recently, in the past few months, and we've been in touch by WhatsApp for many years now, two years in Spanish. <laughs> And they are always trying to buy back land that would have been theirs had the Spaniards not come and taken it. So recently in May, they were witnessing a coal company just about felling 60 trees and almost ready to make a coal mine. And I have a nonprofit called Global Healing Foundation, and we had a benefit concert and we brought them, we brought them in through a video. We brought one of them in through the um, Zoom, and then we had three different sets of performers, and we raised uh, some amount of money that helped to finish the third payment that we had to do because the landowner was willing to sell to them. So, and I'm in an ecological group, and we're reading Robin Kimmerer's, uh, Robert Kimmerer Wall's book, Braiding Sweetgrass, so it feels like, you know, she's an indigenous uh, botanist and she brings in the indigenous point of view, which is non-domination, no hierarchy, reciprocity, you know, kindness, asking permission of the plants, you know, if they need to uh, take a, a tree down, they first have to, you know, they need the bark or they have to ask permission. They don't take it if they're not at, told yes by the plant or the tree. And this and and they just are uh, a community of you know no waste and and just kindness to each other and to nature and everything's conscious. So I was realizing that had the colonial people come here and recognized they could learn from the native people here, what a different world we would have had. Mm -hmm. And no, you know that domination that's going on. I mean, the British pretty much wrecked and so did the Belgium and the French, you know, all the countries that they went into and great, they gave their languages, that's a great thing, but they did so much damage and separating people and creating enmities in Rwanda. Those, uh, the Tutsis and the Hutus were intermarrying until they mm. came and made identity cards and made one superior to the other. So. Mm. There's some kind of theme in here that I'm getting to, and um, I'm trying to um, really understand more from the indigenous people, what they know, what they need, how we can help save mother earth. And I think Jamin's idea of the solar radiation technology is so important. And I have, haven't heard about other people in the news or in the central government really knowing about it. And I want him to really, you know, tell them. And I sent you something today from Jeff Sachs wrote, wrote an article and he's, you know, he's the former head of the Earth Institute at Columbia. He isn't anymore, but his wife is my friend and she sends me all his articles. I want you to get in touch with him. And I mean, I even know from my late husband, Warren Buffett, you know, there are all kinds of people that big, big name people who, and I know you said that that uh, Gates is involved with that technology somehow. It needs to be well known and understood and found out why it can save our planet from global warming. So I, that's kind of, you know, one of my issues. And, but the other way I come into that whole thing is through my poetry. Um, be right before the Gulf War, right before the second Gulf War, when Iraq was going to be bombed, I wrote a book called Roll On Great Earth. I put together a whole lot of poems I'd written during the first Gulf War, and then the second one it was going to happen, and I, oh my God, I was like uh, very um, strangely believing that my book was going to stop the war <laughs> before it started. And um, my first poem was roll on great earth born down upon yet bearing, bearing still. Roll on sweet earth though dirges ring from west to east and nothing stops them still, still not hearing, still not hearing. 
What will it take for them to shake inside their skins and cease the fire? Oh, dire these times must we put on till they, must we put off till they put on the skins of dying men croaking underneath the rubble? Then will we murmur, oh, what we have done, what have we done? So that theme, I have a section called the puzzle of war past and the puzzle of war present. And the second half is more of a positive note of how we can come to a chance for peace. And one of the ways I say is in a pause between breaths, there's a chance for peace. So it's a, I mean, I've been into meditation since living in Thailand in nine, the 1970s. So I have a lot of um, poems like that. But then the, the one that really strikes me the most right now in giving this little sharing is that nature is innocent. And I love that word innocence. So one of my poems called, called The Alchemy of Innocence and, the, and it suggests that because there's more of them than us, that we can imbibe their innocence. We can distill it, we can take it in, we can breathe it in, we can as if we're taking in their sap. So at the end I say, could we absorb deep their sap of innocence, pour it into our own, that we lovers of our earth and the alchemy of blossoming may prevail steadfast bear witness to the splendor of consciousness not gone awry to the splendor of consciousness not gone awry and that is where we're at in our world consciousness has gone awry there's distortion there's untruth there's not seeing clearly and it feels like there has to be a way to bring it back to the true north of our being so I'm not sure where this leads. I mean, I have the ecological group that meets every month and I can tell them about this. And uh, there's a meditation group I meet with every morning that they're from all over the, you know, some from Canada, some from Ohio, Pennsylvania, different places. I can tell them about this. And um, I'm pretty much a loner. I'm home, home alone in my house, my kids, my son visits me outside because he's trying to protect me you know I have so I'm on I'm on the phone I'm online but I don't have a huge um, group to invite here but it sounds like uh, well I also have a, a I, I studied with Sufis and I have some Sufi friends that live live in different places and they're open to all different you know paths and teachings and unity as I mentioned at the beginning, you know, the Hazard Inayat Khan was the master whose son brought, well, he brought Sufism to the West, but his son started a, a Sufi center and uh, he taught some beautiful mystical teachings. Mm. Yeah. What a blessing to have you with us because Thank this you. is the other part of what I'm talking about, a conference where all of these topics get to have an umbrella, their own umbrella. Only and the other thing that I have, as I have like eight different books, most of them are poetry collections. Mm -hmm. And I recently have a couple of children's books and I have some more in the, in the process and they never get known by anybody. And mm. they're on Amazon, not that I put them there. Most of them somehow. One book I did write, which was a, a sequel to the ancient epic of Gilgamesh, if you've heard of that. Yeah. So I didn't like the way it ended, at least the translation that I read. And I wrote about the mother, the wise mother of Gilgamesh. And I told, mm -hmm. she told her story to her son Gilgamesh after he came back, having lost the nectar of immortality, the plant. I don't know if you know the story, he put it down on the ground, took a swim and came back and a snake had eaten the, the plant that was supposed to be the nectar of immortality. So he comes back wow. and asks his mother, how did you become so wise? Tell me your story. So that one I'd had the Amazon press, outskirts press print. And if they're all illustrated, I also paint. So mm -hmm. they got, they're got they all illustrated and you can find me there on, uh, on Amazon. But I, I, you know, Amazon is what ruins the, the local bookstores. I've been to local bookstores that won't print 
carry my books because they're on Amazon. You know, so that's another thing to try to support local. Wow. Imagine for a minute that we have a city, an intentional city in the clouds where everybody comes and and your quiet little poems are suddenly uh, known to everyone in the city. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the only that would place be so I've precious. I've read them in nursing homes. I've read them in nursing homes. It's well, tough. those days are done because we need a city no, with, a, with a library and, and things to check out. And I am sure that you're only speaking for millions of people who have printed or painted something or produced something or created something that's never gotten known because the main media won't put it out there. But what if we're our media? That would be great. We're will... our own media. We don't need the Fox News and the, and the Amazons. We are bigger than any of those. Just think of that little girl who, whose poem she read at the inauguration now, she'll be known. Mm -hmm. She was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm talking about. The whole entire world yeah. was watching her and now she's known. How about we do that for our own? How about the whole entire world watches our city and we all get known? Beautiful. No more separation. <laughs> You're a treasure. I I just adore you so much. Such a sweet, oh, tender thank soul. You. And thank you, thank you. I'm just so I just feel privileged to have people like you and Roland on here and 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 you know, you guys are changing my life. I'm having a transformational experience because I stepped into this room one day and uh, I had what I call a BFO. It's a blinding flash of the obvious as a doinker. <laughs> I got it. We get to create conferences that, that unite people. And then Jamin and I and, and Marco and uh, there was somebody else on the line too at that time, Christopher, I think. We all just sort of collaborated together and had it. Boom, it's born. It's called the city and the clouds. And it just came together because of the synergy in the room. And um, it's, it's I'm having a transformation experience because of that. I can see possibilities of your book and all your poems being known to so many millions more people because we're all united now. You know, I wrote a book too that I thought was going to change the world, but it no one's noticed it. Um, and I didn't put it on Amazon. But what if it did? What if it did get noticed? What if it did change the world? That's a whole segment of our of our of our city is the arts. Let's not forget the arts. I just put my my um, email and the Global Healing Foundation website in the chat, but I'd like to Thank know you. your email. Okay, I'll put that out there. So thank you again. Thank you. I'm complete. Just a minute, Jamin, give me one second. No problem. And just so you know, Dana needs to go soon and she's next in the queue. Um, just just FYI. Yeah, let's go with uh, uh, Dana. And then after that, let's create a little break for ourselves. That sounds like a great idea. All right, Dana. Thank you. Hello, hi, everyone. So uh, yeah, I have to go do some work. And actually, what I'm doing is uh, helping to edit this book here. Um, the scientific proof of god it's a book Ooh. on unified field theory by frederick swarup honig and the reason i mentioned this is because of all the links um so you you mentioned the the line of teachers uh Sachitananda and shivananda um and this man frederick swarup honig who is who i'm working with at the spirit of aloha gardens in maui um he was a longtime disciple of Swami Satchitananda, mm. whose teacher was Shivananda. Mm. And let's see, there's a picture of, I'm going to show you. Yes, yeah, so this is when he was younger with uh, Satchitananda. Mm. And uh, Ananda, I, I, I sort of had this intuition before you mentioned it that you might be from that line <laughs> of uh, teachers. It's coming up a lot lately, like different people that I connect with. 
are, are from that, that tradition. I'm not myself, um, but I've just learned a little bit about, uh, about it through this man that I'm working with here. And I know he's written this, speaking of books on Amazon, he has this book on Amazon, The Scientific Proof of God. The subtitle is uh, A Holistic Model of Physics, Integrating the Dimensions of Consciousness and Intention into the Standard Model of Physics. And uh, it's quite a innovative and, and book that unites science and spirituality. And he's also wanting to get his work more known and his book more known out there, just like you guys were talking about. And right now I'm, I'm helping to edit the next um, iteration of the book that will be uh, available on Amazon. So that's what I have to go do. <laughs> but, wow. Um, yeah, but it's cool that you guys all were talking about. See, and Claire now also, that's great. Yeah, the, the line of Swami Satyatananda and Shivananda Ashram. Yeah, so yeah, my my friend here, Frederick Swaroop, um, he was at the ashram of Swami Satyatananda for, for many, many years and different ashrams and actually this one in Virginia that they made and he helped build this amazing temple of light called the Lotus. Uh, which is just this amazing architectural, beautiful like temple because he is skilled in, in building things. Um, and the other thing that he teaches, I, I guess coming from this line of work is, is about the Nada meditation, uh, listening to the sound of the universe, the, the fundamental sound, the Nada. And my uh, Frederick Swarup, or he's called him Swarup, he is uh, passionate about that. Like that's, he, he writes about it in his book. He, wants to put it more out there into the world and so on. So it's interesting, all these uh, interconnections. <laughs> so I just wanted to bring that in before I go edit the book more. Well, we're all speaking the same language. Everybody here knows those same words. Yeah. Unify, unity, uh, you know, collaboration, oneness. We all know those words. We just have to do something about it now. We're being called out to really be the change. Yeah. Thank you, Dana. And I, I love the sound of that book. <laughs> yeah, Boy, man. I get done with these calls and I got all kinds of homework to do. Good grief, you know. I'll put the title in the chat. He, he would love more people to know about it, to review it, you know, to sort of help uh, get the word out a little bit more about it. Yeah, let's, uh, you know, create our own bookshelf where we're just kind of we just kind of push off all the books that are, are not really anything at all to do with our future. And we'll just create all new bookshelves with everything that has to do with where we're going with this. <laughs> our own chosen library. You know what I'm saying? It's like everybody's book who, who deserves to be mentioned will be there on our shelves. Nothing about anything that's old world. Don't have room for that. <laughs> Right. A, li a library of intentionalia. Oh, intentionalia. Yeah, the library of intentionalia. Wow. Well, I'm going to request a little bit of a break here. Who's next on cue? Next, we've got Kate, uh, followed by Jamin. And um, I also want to welcome Alchemy, who just joined us. We've been at it for three hours now, so it's high time for for a break, I just want to check in with Kate. Kate, are you, do you want to go after the break or before you're, you're flexible? Okay, great. So again, we've been at it for three hours. We are recording. I'm going to pause recording. First of all, Claire, I've only had a glimpse of your beauty here and there. Mm -hmm. I feel like today I really, you know, it's like, I've just felt the extensiveness of your beauty, but it's like, oh my God. I just feel its depth today as you read the poetry. You know, as you, I remember we had to stop. Claire's going to read the intro to the book as Jamin comes in just to get to know her that first time you came. And so, and to Ananda, of course, you know, I love you. I keep coming back. But I also want you to, to know that Jamin has been preaching this entire message that you speak of for months now. And all of the amazing people you meet it's his network. It's his friends. It's, but um, with that being said, uh, I, I, the other point I want to make is he has this brilliant mind 
and this big heart that takes us to this place of shared governance in such a way that he'll, you know, he'll let any of us run the show, so to speak, in 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 a way. And I guess that that's what I think I need. We need to speak to too. I hear the excitement. I mean, believe me, I'm excited. I hope the new city has an amusement park. <laughs> anyway. Um, Believe me, nobody wants to create the new city more than me. I want to do it right here on the, on, on the earth, you know, in this Lemurian, not in this, I mean, but I understand if we have to do it in the ether you know. um, And I, but I guess what I just need to say is that, that it's kind of important not to be known, you know? It's just as important not to be known as to be known. And with that, take that on your break. And I'm loving you all, but I felt like I just needed to express that. Thank you for listening. Talk with you. Thank you, love. I just every time Kate comes on, my heart just speeds up a little out of love for her. I, if I could <laughs> just reach through and hug you, I would give you such a hug. You'd mm -hmm. never forget it. So, Jamin, how about we do 30 minutes? We'll be back at 4.30. That sounds good to me. Is that, is Everybody that else working okay for with Yeah, I think a 30 minute break is, is brilliant, actually. And uh, I'll just take a couple of minutes and welcome the folks who've just joined and let them know I'm going to pause recording.